We're here. We're here. Just wait a couple more minutes. We'll be right with you. You don't like my choice of music? Uh, are you, are you serious? Come on. not getting you pumped up for the show okay 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 let me take care of that Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's showtime, folks! What's up? <laughs> Welcome it's back. been so long. It has been. Insert long. dad joke. We haven't seen you guys since last year. <laughs> that is true. It has been 
Yeah, yeah so ago. I'm Dana. I'm Tim. Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Time. So just like every time we start, not nervous. <laughs> it's, He's it's literally weird. over here just doing this. Vibrating. Yeah, there's so many cameras and audio. <laughs> Speaking of audio, let us know. Mm -hmm. Is the audio cropping out like it did last week? By last yeah. week, I meant like last episode last episode yeah and uh we try to monitor it as much as we can but at the end of the day you guys are our ears and our eyes mm -hmm. so first things first let everybody know what we're going to tie first and yeah. then they can get their bobbins threaded for sure so we're going to for myself tonight i'm going to just be using for both flies, I'm going to use a uh, UTC 140. Um, that's going to be... What fly do you got in the vise? Oh, well, I don't know what you're showing. Well, that's the reason that Dana doesn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> that is called the Spun Sparkle, and it was tied by my 12-year-old daughter. Uh-huh. Uh so 40-year-old Dana, maybe. This, <laughs> that was last year. Yeah. I'm 41. Sorry, 41. So, why don't you show us which fly <laughs> yes. we're going to attack first. Okay, we'll attack. I'll show you. We're going to do the hippie stomper first. I'll show you this guy here. It's going to be our first pattern. Okay, super fun. I'm excited to do that one with you guys. What we're actually going to do is we're going to prep our other fly first because there is a few steps to the preparation piece side of it. Um, but this will be the one we first tie. Um, what I'm going to do for both flies just out of for it being simple, I'm just going to use a black uh, UTC 140. You do want to use the 140, um, at least a 140 or a 3-0, we'll say, denier, just because we need the strength. We're going to be working on the foam, um, and if we have too thin a thread, it could also cut through the foam, which we don't want to do either. And both flies tonight, as you can see, if you have your packages at home, both flies are going to be foam flies, um, a hopper, and then this guy here. So. Um, yeah, UTC 140. You, if you want to switch up for the second one and go to like a tan or something that's a little bit more appropriately colored to the fly we're doing, that's totally fine too. Um, I just didn't do that. So. Yeah, yeah, so thread's a good conversation because you can use white thread on everything and just get a marker and color it if you want. Um, you can also dub your thread if you're wrapping foam and you don't want your thread to be shown. Mm -hmm. I personally think that sometimes an overkill. I yeah. don't quite understand. We probably don't need color. 50 different spools of thread. You could probably get by with like six, and that's just three colors and two different sizes, honestly. So. Yeah. Yeah. So if you could stock up on thread, what would it be? So I'm a little. I don't. I don't know if it's because of the way that I started tying or not, or the influences I had from other people, but. I almost exclusively tie with UTC thread. It's not because it's better, it's just what I'm used to. Um, so I normally tie with a UTC and I, I tie with 70 or 140 um, is kind of the two that I go with. And then I'll jump up to a 200 or a 250 for big stuff like pipe flies where I need to spin hair. Um, but those are pretty much the three sizes I use. I have experimented some with some of the like the nano silk and stuff, which is like 18 aught, super small, and it is super strong. strong which I love, it's crazy good stuff, but it's also $6 a roll, so there's that piece of it too. Um, but the other, kind of the, the other well-known ones, you got your, your uh, Danville, um, different sizes, they kind of run in a different number scheme too, they're like 210 or 70, so it's similar to these ones. Um, and then we have our, where's my last ones here, see if I have some here, uh, Unithread, that's kind of the other big one. So Unithread is the guys that normally talk in 6 aught, 3 aught, 8 aught. That's kind of how they they mark it, and so three out would be the big would be bigger than a six out, and so on. Um, but those are kind of the big brands of thread. There's a lot more out there now, um, different brands yeah. are making thread. But those are kind of the, the the three that have been around a while. And then also something you don't get with the UTC is um, they're not wax thread. So some people like depending on what you're tying. Let's say. Okay, elk hair caddis. So I know I'm gonna be putting some dubbing on at some point. So if I'm gonna spin dubbing on and I want a pre-wax thread, I could use a wax thread. So a lot of uni um, in Danville will have, like this one here, it's called flat wax nylon. So it's pre-waxed. You don't have to put wax on it if, if you use wax. Um, so there's all those kind of pieces to it. 
Thread's a big conversation. We love to hear questions if that's if it's something that interests or, you. Or uh, tips. Or tips, yeah, because um, everybody has their own thing. Like I like I said, I use what I do because I'm comfortable with it. You probably have something else, so we're wide open to, to hear about. Yeah, it. and like Jacques here, who's a prolific published uh, Atlantic salmon fly tire, mm -hmm. and Jacques, correct me if I'm wrong, but she's got a he's got a couple books out of fly tying, and so he says. I mean, that's somebody who's been tying forever. Uh, a uni A dot and six dot is all you need. So yeah. taking it from somebody who's been tying probably longer than I've been fishing. Yeah. And <laughs> not saying you're old. No, just experience. I'm young. It's just I'm really young. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, anyways, welcome to Thursday yeah. Night Live. And uh, I apparently am working on good. my people, people skills. skills. You know? Because I like this beer. And, yeah, uh, drink some far tonight. Some hefe. Some hefe far, which is made with banana. Is that, yeah, it's banana. Right? I was say, it's there interesting. There's seriously a uh, fruity something going on in there. But not fruity like you and my <laughs> fly that you embarrassed me with. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. You're just practicing some skills on your new Norvice. But fruity... Uh, let's say I dubbed a lot of thread this <laughs> <Yeah>. week. <laughs> He's been introduced to the world. Yeah, so we can talk about that. Yeah. But let's get to you guys and what really matters. And if I can scroll back into the comments here. First of all, a couple things that helps out is if you share this post on your Facebook feed or the YouTube or wherever you're watching from, uh, feel free to give it a share and uh just get some more cool people like you guys here time flies with us and not everyone here is time flies nope. they're just drinking beer like me hanging right <laughs> it's why we have the yin and yang mm -hmm. i'm here to just hang out and drink some beers and tim will tie some flies, flies. or wreck some flies <laughs> or we don't even know we don't know every day is different okay so let's get to the comments here that's really good beer <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, okay. Jennifer Lyle, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. The real Jen Lyle. Real Jen Lyle. Went on a walk the other day and I ran into both of the Lyles. Uh, Chris Nelson from Colorado. Uh, and talking about somebody who's learning to tie. I chatted with Chris and he's excited to just jump in, drink some beer. Nice. And uh, I believe he's starting a fly tying class tomorrow night. Awesome. So cool. We're glad you're here. Mm -hmm. uh, Roman Quintana. From Montana. From Montana. <laughs> well, let's just call him Mr. Montana. Uh, <laughs> like Doug Lindsay, time to tie. Time to tie. Alana Brumwell, hello. hello. She tends to speak in foreign languages <laughs> for us. She didn't do that on the boat. Thank goodness. But uh, Steve Tocheniak, and I believe I said it right once. Um, Mark Holcomb, welcome back. Bruce yeah, Cole, Mike. Craig Jones, it's been a long few weeks. Nice shirt, Tim. That is from our friends at Shore Fishing. Um, Cam, Cam Woolnuff. What's up, buddy? We can't see now if you have a top fan badge <laughs> yeah. or not. Can't see it. Uh, so Brent you Struthers, welcome. Uh, Claude Delisle, I think I said that right. Uh, Scott Borschelt, did your dad get your kid up to you? Let me know. Um, Cheyenne, she likes the name. <laughs> I believe she's talking about the hippie, hippie stomper. stomper. Mm -hmm. uh, Fritz Redatz from Germany. Hey, Fritz. Welcome. Welcome. Um, then there's some jokes here about Cam <laughs> tying rope on to tie his flies. So yeah, let us know where you're from, what you're drinking, iced tea, bubbly, wood, beer. If you're into the hard stuff, let us know. Um, and if you're joining in, uh, Tim's tying with, what's your first thread? Same thread for both, UTC 140 and black. UTC 140 or ADOT? Uh, Ish? Six -aught. 6 aught Sorry, yeah, the other way. Uh, Cody Frankie from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, one of our sponsors. Cody. He is here for Hopper Night. Hopper Night. We should have drank some hoppy yeah. beer 
No, we shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Elaine Doug, fruit doesn't belong in beer. So that's a good question. That is. That's a good question. Does it belong on pizza? Tell us what you think. It doesn't. My opinion. I think it does. Actually, that's not true. Apples are okay on some pizza. Not uh, Matthew York. Finally, the kits showed up in Alaska. Amazing. So Great we apologize, here. but there's nothing we can do about the transportation yeah. of your kits. Um, Dave Sexton from Michigan. I see yeah. he's a Spartan fan. Spartan fan. Yeah. Um, I hate to say that I went to Western <laughs> Michigan, <laughs> and I'm not a Spartan fan. <laughs> and Mark Holcomb is also a Bronco. Okay, Chaz is drinking Gibson's. Nice. Uh, Scott got his kit on Tuesday. Perfect. Awesome. Jamie Kerr. Uh, Scott Berge says, not on pizza. Yeah, I'm with you, bud. But does it belong in beer? That is the question. Um, Claude is drinking the last of the eggnog with Forty Creek Nanaimo. Mm. Marvin Carl, good evening to you, sir. Mm. Welcome. So Thursday Night Live, what is it? If this is your first time joining in, um, this is episode three. I think we've three done five. <laughs> yeah, There's we a did a couple bonus episodes in there. Pre episodes. So this is episode three of this season. And so what we I was going through old photos the other day mm -hmm. and how we started Thursday Night Live was we would meet at a brewery every Thursday and we would film it like this, but we got to meet with people and hang out and as we all know that's kind of been a no-no can't do it anymore for the last Too year long. ish so yeah during covid we built a studio a very large studio so that we could social distance in the studio and we could still bring you thursday night live so we go over two patterns every night we have put together kits this year and full of material for you guys um, because what we've been doing for the past three years is putting those kits at the brewery and just giving them to the people who come and join us a note about the kits um, I noticed we had a very poor review on the Google so what we got to understand here is how many one of those kits there's a crevice at the bottom here okay and sometimes your hooks or your bead will get stuck in there so make sure when you open these kits okay you're very cautious about it we've had people open them think they're missing stuff and at the end of the show they find a hook on the floor uh it happened to tim a couple mm -hmm. episodes ago he couldn't find the bead and it was stuck in the side of this bag. So also we please ask you to have some grace as packaging these things is a monster undertaking and trying to put, what did we do? 80 kits, 80 kits, uh, 1600 flies. flies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so we, tried our darndest to make sure every kit had every single piece of material if there's a piece of material f forgotten or missing or maybe stuck in the bottom and you didn't see it we just ask for grace okay because you can see all the material jammed in here there's no machine that can do it we can't put it on a production line and fill it up with material so we've done our best and it is a learning process. Mm. So if there's a problem, please reach out to us and we'll make it right. Uh, just give us the opportunity to talk to you about it more yeah. than anything, right? Like this, like Dana said, it, if you're going straight to, let's say, giving us a poor review or something is, isn't the right choice, right? It, it actually harms us a lot and we're trying to do this to give back and to keep the show going. Um, we just asked for a little bit of grace, like you said. There is human error involved in this process. We know that um, from the last three years of experience doing these at the brewery. We know that stuff gets missed. Um, hopefully it's something that's not critical or you have of your own. 
that you could replace it with. But we're willing to rectify that. If yeah, you just hold talk us, to just us. Just talk to us. We'd like to make it make it right if that's the problem. Um, I think that's enough said. Just yeah. Yeah. So just checking out some uh, comments here, and I know they are delayed, so sometimes they're not super relevant. Um, Jen Lyle is upset because you wouldn't return her call <laughs> and you thought they were going to hang out during the holidays. Oh, well, sorry, bud. Um, so the only way that she could mend her broken heart was a bad review. Ah. Well, the it's, restrictions were tight. Yes, that's sure true. We were to meet it up. is COVID times. <laughs> a COVID times. A Spartan would never give you a crappy review. <laughs> yes. Sorry, right, Dave. The uh, kids are great. Much appreciated. Thanks, yes. Guys. Um, so yeah, we're not perfect and guess what? We never will be. No. And, and that part of the to unique thing here yeah. and, that, and I, and I hope that you guys understand that is that we're pretty vulnerable people. Um, there will be at some point in 20 episodes with all the flies we tie that I'm going to screw something up and it's going to fall apart and we can all laugh at a it. A lot. Cause I'm not a perfect tire. I have not even tying. close. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, this guy, I mean, maybe I'll so get in there. <laughs> yeah. Now that we've talked yeah. about you being vulnerable, fall apart. We'll, yeah. we'll get Dana on here. And hey, I didn't fall me. apart last year. <laughs> no, it's true. It didn't. Yeah, it was pretty no, good. It was actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I fished it this summer. <laughs> yeah, successfully. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, like Claude said, I love these kits. I don't need to buy material for fifty flies when I need to the two. Mm -hmm. So, Zach thinks we're perfect <laughs> well zach well zach if we can get down there to see you <laughs> yeah. in april you're gonna get a big smooch and a hug <laughs> yeah. from a bearded man and his yes go on <laughs> his friend, <laughs> his friend. <laughs> and his, and his yeah. little buddy yeah so again it's just a disclaimer reach out we will do our best to rectify the situation and we're striving for excellence but um we're not perfect. The show's going to crash. The cameras are going to shut off. Tim's going to blow up a fly. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm going to be over there one day tying <laughs> flies for you guys. I'll be <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. I don't know what else we got to say, but some fine folks back where we came from. <laughs> that didn't lead into anything no, except poorly. The background music. I think I found a trick. You did. But before then, hold tight. Let's thank our sponsors mm -hmm. for the awesome contributions and making this night happen for all of us. So hang tight. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Aw, oh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Family owned and operated. Need local flies? We're your guides. There are a lot of great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. All right, thanks to our sponsors, mm -hmm. and now what we came for. <laughs> a little bit of tying. Okay, so what, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to, we got our other pattern, which I haven't me. shown you yet. Oh, come on now. You came for me. No, not true. Not true. See, face, I control the cameras. <laughs> so, uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry. We'll let Tim uh -huh, have the show. Uh -huh, okay, it's uh -huh. you, Tim. Go Tell ahead. Me. Go ahead. I'll sit over here <laughs> yeah, and just... talk with my friends. <laughs> Okay, so the first or the the second fly we're gonna tie is gonna be um, I'll put it here in the vise so you can see a little better. This is what we call a Pavlov hopper. Okay, it's terrible, uh, terrible pattern. It's a, don't fish it don't on the fish bow. Don't fish it on the bow. Why do we give all our secrets away? It's not a secret. It's, it's not terrible. A secret, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's anyways. an adult <laughs> red worm. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. That's true. So this pattern, guys, is uh, it it actually is quite simple once you get to tying it. The problem is there's work to do before that. So the bottom of this fly, as you can see, um, it's this, it's furry, furry foam, basically what they call it. It's a fuzzy material. Um, sometimes you can, you can buy it with a sticky back. Sometimes you can't find it that way. 
So what we tried to do is actually take it back to the absolute basic, um, which is going to be the most difficult way to do it. So if you can't find any of these, the better materials to do it with, you're going to have um, this furry stuff that's not attached yet to foam. We're going to pre-cut the foam. We're going to um, glue the foam, and then we're going to build this fly. Okay. So first things we got to do in, let's go into our kit. So if you got your kit, go to episode three. We're going to start off by pulling out the one that you can tell has the lighter colored foam in it. And be careful in this one, guys, because there's a lot of little things in here. We actually have stick on eyes as well that we're going to glue on. So um, I want you to take everything out carefully on one side of your tying desk and kind of get it out of the way. And then we're going to come in and come back to it once we get this first initial stuff done. We just want to make sure we don't lose any of our hooks or anything like that. So we're going to get that stuff out. And you'll notice with the kits, you've got um, a, a hook probably stuck in your bag as well. So just make sure you get that out carefully without losing it, because that's going to be your second fly to tie at another time. So we got two different colors of foam in here. So we're going to have, ooh, dropped a piece. We're going to have two different colors of foam. We're going to have a brown and then like a peachy color. This peachy color is, is a really magical color when it comes to this pattern. Not totally sure why, but it's it's great. So basically what we're trying to do is we're going to, um, if you can see the fly that's in your bay, you can see there's two different colors of foam and then, the, and then the furry stuff on the bottom. So in essence, what we need to do is we need to glue those two pieces of foam together. And then we need to glue, where did I drop it here? My furry foam. Um, <clears throat> there's some quotes here. Quotes. Mm -hmm. Quotes. Comments. Comments. Um, if we're going too fast. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. SOS in the comments and we'll stop. Yes, okay, so just chuck it out there. SOS. We'll stop the show. Well, we'll keep going, but we'll stop tying mm -hmm. and uh, wait for you guys to help out. Give a little break. Yeah. Um, so, guys, when we're when we're working through any of this process of any of these flies like dane said just take a second um give us an sos if you need it we're, we're not in any rush to go anywhere so if we need to uh if we need to slow down and redo it um just just let me know okay so first thing we need to do is we need to take these two pieces of foam and we need to glue them together okay so I know that when looking at this fly that you have in your bag you know you don't need all of this glued together at once and I don't suggest trying to do it but what the, the trick is, is when you first start doing this, um, I would be taking an entire sheet of foam, okay? So I would take a flat sheet of foam, and I would go foam, glue it, foam, and then I would put the, a huge sheet of fur on top of it. Because doing it that way, it, uh, it makes it easier to just cut it later, but obviously we couldn't do that in these packages, so we're gonna kinda do it the harder way to start with. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna hand this over to Dane for a second. I gotta grab a piece of uh, material here that I dropped. <laughs> One second. Well, I knew there was a time of the show where I would be more important <laughs> than the flies. So, has anybody heard of the new fly Kia tables? I don't know if you can see this, but mm. fly Kia. Well, that's just a sticker. But the fly Kia tables are at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop and you should check them out. I believe their website is rockymountainflyshop.net. -E so you could check them out there. Uh, super cool. Tim ties on them all the time. Um, I would tie on one other than everything is set up on the show table. So there's that. But they're, they're modular. They are designed for people who don't have a ton of space and they got a shelf up top. You can hold 15 different threads, your tool holders on the side, and you've got little uh, cups routered out so you can store beads and hooks and all that stuff. And this big-ish, it doesn't mean anything. It sounds like a fish story, but uh, super cool. I know some of the people in here have those tables. If you have one, let people know what you think and uh we could ship one out to you guys if you're interested we will do some videos on how they kind of go together because it's called fly kia um like ikea and when you get it you just gotta tap in some pegs and kind of build your table shouldn't take you more than like two minutes um and the cool thing is, is they show up bare 
and you can be creative and paint it anything you want or just slather it in stickers. I think Tim's off the floor. Yeah. So we'll go back to Timothy. Yeah. I uh, pulled out at like literally yep, like we talked like about. We said. <laughs> I took stuff out and I got caught on my sleeve, falls on the floor. So it's kind of like workspace. Got to keep it clean and whatever. But anyways, so like I was saying before, I was crawling around on the floor. We're going to start by putting these two pieces of foam together. Okay. So I suggest you could use UV glue, but it's not going to work that great because you can't get UV um, rays in through the foam. So I suggest um, using some type of head cement, preferably a super glue is going to be your quickest drying. Okay. So that's why we're going to start with this first and get it glued. And then we'll go come back to it after because the problem is it, it, you might need some time to dry if you're just using like some Sally Hansen's or something. But best, best case scenario is you're going to have something like this. Um, I'm just using some Zappa Gap. Um, unfortunately, this isn't the brush on. The brush on is easier, but still we'll make it work. So like I said, we got that long piece of foam. I'm actually just going to take it and I'm going to cut it and cut those in half together so that I have a little bit easier time working with them. Because like I said before, I would probably actually be, be gluing a full like four by six inch sheet together and then using like cutouts and stuff after. Um, but this is this is the raw way to do it. OK, so I'm going to take this to my table. I'm going to take the super glue, glue it, stamp them together. Now, if you've ever worked with super glue, you know that if you get it on your fingers and then anything else you touch after that, you're in trouble. So be careful. Um, see if that works to show. See if what's there? Oh, I see that, that view. I'm just trying to make it better for everyone. Yeah, just so you can see. I'll try to do it up here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do it on the vise itself. So <clears throat> I'm going to start by putting a little bit of super glue on this guy, kind of just using, if you don't have the brush on like I don't right now, I'm just going to use the nozzle to kind of spread it out. And we do want to make sure we get the glue all the way out to the edges. Now, if this foam wasn't pre-cut and you might be asking yourself, well, what, how wide do I make it? Kind of like a lot of different flies that we tie that are hopper patterns. Um, what we're going to do is always say if we take a hook like so, like the hook that's for this fly, we take that hook gap. So from the hook shank down to the hook point, and that's about the width that we want that foam to be. So if I'm going to flip it up, you could kind of half measure it. Okay. And that's for this fly and the next one is going to be that, that same way. Okay. So then I'm going to take this brown one and I'm going to lay it down on top of it. And you're probably going to get about one good try. Get your fingers off of it, get it lined up. And you do want to have it pretty much even on both sides. Okay. So I, I've got that on there. Be careful if you put too much glue on and then you squeeze it because the glue will come out the edges and then you're then you're in even more trouble. Okay, so I've, I've pressed that together. I'm going to give that a half a second. Now we're going to go to this other material. Now this stuff is frustrating. Okay, and I'll, I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. This stuff is not easy to work with. It's got stretch to it. It's got like if you if you get super glue on your fingers and then on it and you pull your finger back, it's going to come apart. So worst case scenario. If you screw up that material, and I will only say in this because I did it earlier this week when I was working on this fly, um, then don't worry about it. Just tie it without the fur. The pattern is still applicable. This is just a little added bit of fuzz that for whatever reason we, we use it this way and it works, so we keep doing it. This hopper pattern without the fuzz on the bottom is just the same. It's as effective. It's Most hoppers don't have this stuff on it, but I wanted to teach you how to try to work with it because um, maybe you, want, you, you can find patterns that you might want to put this on later, okay? So now what I need to do is I need to do the exact same thing I just did. I need to glue again on top of this. And this time I'm going to put the glue on top of the pink foam. And I want this stuff to be on top of the pink. Okay. So I'll hold this up here. This asking to be covered in glue here. I'm going to put some glue. Making sure this time, especially I get right out to the edges. Okay. Because we want that furry stuff to get right out to the edges. We are going to do a little bit of cutting on the foam, but we want it to be all the way out there. I'm going to set this on my table and then put it on just because I can't do this one up top for you guys. It's a beautiful vice. It is. Why don't you tell me about it? And burnt orange. <laughs> and your if you get color? <laughs> glue on my new vice. Yeah, I'm getting glue on your vice. We'll have words. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever use spray adhesive? Because I like that. Yeah, you, you like don't. the spray stuff. I, I don't. I don't really like it um, personally, but I'll be honest that I'll, well, I'll show you this piece here. This this is off of a different a different kind of foam or furry stuff. You see how it's white on the back? 
This stuff is different than what, you, what we were using today. The stuff we're using today doesn't have a sticky back on it. If I peel off this white, it's like a big sticker and I don't even have to super glue the fur. Super the fur. hard to find that stuff. But this isn't as easy to find and that's unfortunately, it's not even expensive. It's like four bucks for a whole sheet and you get a ton of flies out of it. It's just that you can't always find it and that's the, the frustration point. The other stuff is easier to find. Most of the time this is used on different like saltwater patterns and stuff. Um, so normally if you go to a store, it's got a good variety, you might be able to find it, okay? So this is what I'm left with, okay? Like so. So now what I want you to do is take that and just set it aside, okay? Let it dry, let it get good and dry before we, we work on cutting it. So everything that was in that package that you were tying um, that fly with, just kind of set it aside so it's out of the way. Why? Well, yeah. we'll come back to it. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Mark says, uh, comment here he said his furry crap has gone to hell and stuck to my fingers <laughs> yeah there it is <laughs> it, yeah guys it's the tough material but like i said your pattern is not lost uh you got a wicked pattern even with all the fur so it's just oh cam cam are you and mark brothers <laughs> yep okay. yep i it's, think they are twins it's uh it's tough but uh, do your best and if it falls apart it falls apart and then we'll just tie it without it yeah so if your furry foam sticks to your fingers which tim why don't you tell us what happened earlier well it's still stuck on my fingers so <laughs> yeah, i can tell you that it happens so, there is a trick to that but uh truly if you like the pattern the furry bottom is an element it's good but you can still tie your fly without that and it's just as effective um but if you're getting into that get the sheets and then spray them or glue them in more of a mass production type sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Adrian said a shop in Calgary has the adhesive version. And if you can find that stuff, stock up. Because yep. that is the ticket. When you find it, buy it all. Uh, yeah. So Doug doesn't have glue. What are options? So um, without, without glue, you, you really can't adhere it outside of some type of spray adhesive or um, a, even a resin, Doug, if you've got like some nail polish. Nail polish works, you just have to let it dry a little bit longer. Um, you really want a quick drying stuff for this because otherwise it'll just soak into that fur and then it doesn't really adhere to the foam below. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. I'm not sure if there's really any other way to do it besides mm -hmm. gluing it. But um, what you could do yeah. is you could pinch at least your two pieces of foam mm -hmm. and tie this and then hold off on the second fly, grab some adhesive because that's a cool thing to learn. Mm -hmm. Because trust me, I've stuck more fingers together and ruined more pieces of foam patches. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Even double-sided tape might work. It would, yeah. yeah. Cause you're not like, I'll be honest, one fish in and all the fur is pretty much mangled. It's gone, yeah. But it's it's still kind of there and I, I don't know why but it seems to create this buggy buggy appearance to this fly so even if you just use double hairspray tape in it, oh, scott bergy oh yeah there he's you go. a great tire yeah 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 it's a yeah. good it's a good it's tip a good point. um yeah. some so for you. cheyenne had a good comment she said did anyone not get <laughs> foam fingers <laughs> uh the gorilla goo with brush oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Yeah, like Tim said, the furry foam will. Yeah. But maybe it, it's just for us. I don't, I don't know. It's just the psychological thing now I know. for me. But because we tied some crabs with that when oh, we yeah. were in Oman, and they they, they were deadly. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were deadly. But anyways, okay. Anyway, it's just yeah. But like I said, even uh, Doug, like you've got enough for two patterns, man. So just maybe tie one along with us tonight without the fur, and then do the next one tomorrow with some. It, like I said, yeah. they're both going to fish just fine. Yeah, and so it's a good point because all of these videos are stored on YouTube. And so after the show or tomorrow, um, you can pop in and watch them again. Yeah, totally. And worst case scenario, the fly that came in your kit is the one, is the one to fish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's Steve. <laughs> You're assuming I catch fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the furry foam called? I think it's Ooh, furry foam. Uh, it's called furry foam, yeah. Adhesive backed adhesive furry foam. Adhesive backed furry foam is the stuff you really want to find. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Okay. Back. So to Tim. now we got that drying. Let's move on to our hippie stomper. That's the first fly we're gonna tie. That's a, a fun fly. Super fun fly. Um, I'll show you a couple other ones here that I tied this week. If you want to change up the color, the variation, 
This would be like almost a green Drake Ooh, style, which Davis look at that. With. You could tie it in. Oh man, what else did I tie here? Tied in red. There's literally so many different variations of this pattern that you could tie. Um, and the, the cool thing is really, they actually recommend anywhere from a size eight to a size 18. So that you can tie these super small. Um, and they're just, they're not trying to be a specific pattern. Yes, it could go hopper. It could go stonefly. It could be, um, it's just big and buggy and it stays afloat really well. Uh, the hackle, the foam, everything. It's like riffly water, really good fly for it because it's just going to stay up there. Okay. My, my favorite <laughs> part about the comments is I think as a group, we're a train wreck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> collectively. Uh, <coughs> this, where did I see that? Uh, where did, where did I see that comment? Oh, my super glue was frozen in the garage. I heated it and it's all good. So it's like, <laughs> just, we'll, we'll get yeah. there together guys. We'll get it's there fine. together. It's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, so could you apply dubbing to the hook first? Totally could. Oh yeah, definitely. Lots yeah. of, lots of foam patterns have dubbing on the hook yeah. and people will glue the dubbing and the foam gets glued to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it can it can be used as an, an an extra way to to gain adherence to it. So take a look at your pattern, guys. That's kind of your general what we're going for. We're gonna be tying this cool purple and black version. Um, I'll take you through it. It's a pretty simple fly, but again, like some of these simple foam ones, there's so many variations that you can do to it that it's a pretty good fly to have in your arsenal, just because you can fill your toolbox with a bunch of different uh, colors and variations and sizes. Okay, so in that package. As always, you got enough uh, to tie two flies. So be careful when you're pulling it all out. As always, this one doesn't have any small eyes in it, but there is other small pieces. See, I still got fur stuck in my finger. <laughs> <laughs> We're it's like Spider-Man with all the hair growing out oh, the yeah. tips of our fingers. Yeah, yeah, that too. Okay, so we're gonna take this, uh, take your hook and get it secured in your vise. This is what, a size six or an eight? Something like that. Anyways, it's, about a it's a streamer seven. hook. <laughs> it's a seven. <laughs> we like the downturned eye on this guy. Um, a lot of fur, or a lot of foam patterns. We like that. It's an easy way to get a whip finish at the end. And it actually, the explanation for this fly is that with the foam at the top, the way it's sitting with all the hackle, that if you were to give it a, a mend and move it, the downturned eye is supposed to actually make it want to ride up onto the surface versus diving. Now I know that seems opposite because the eye is pointed down just telling you what i was told okay so on this one we got two pieces of foam we're going to be working with we're going to tie them both in so we got a purple one and a black one the purple one's going to be our first or sorry the black one's going to get tied in first then the purple but they're going to fold over so the purple will be on the bottom um, again you want to go in and check we might not have uh, cut these perfectly sized you can see that one might be a little bit uh a little bit wide the purple one i will say this We'd like the purple one to be a little bit undersized of that hook gap, and then the black one, we want to be that hook gap in size. Okay, so we want the purple to be just a little smaller. So if you got to adjust your foam, um, go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go in and do that quickly for myself. Do you want to comment on my new background music? <sighs> You're not gonna win the worst <laughs> music award anymore. I know, <laughs> I get to give it up. It's, it's much better than it has been, I'll it's tell you a that. New year, folks. I found some <laughs> background music that yeah, doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Okay, so I'm gonna take my UTC 140 in black. I'm gonna start it behind the eye. We wanna lay a nice base here down of thread. So go ahead, work your thread all the way to the back. Lay down a nice thread base all the way into that hook bend. Good. Now where I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna come and leave it back right about by the hook point. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tie in our hair. So we got a tail that we're gonna, there's different materials you can use to do it. Um, we're gonna use this black fur tonight. It's, it's, I'm actually not totally sure what uh, this is from, but it's a lot softer. It's, it, what you're really looking for is to almost create like on a wolf when you're using moose body hair or something like that. You want to get that um, longer fibers protruding out the back just to create the appearance of a tail of some kind. So we're going to we're gonna take, let's say, about half of what you have on this on your patch because we will have enough there for two flies. And we're going to snip it off 
and you can stack it um, but if you can get a hold of it, it we're not really super concerned about the tips being perfectly aligned because they're not all going to be so I just like to kind of go in separate that out get a good pinch on it and I'm gonna cut it out off the patch and I'm gonna keep it oriented in my hands so that I can go right in and I'm gonna tie it in as is okay so all I did was switch my fingers back I'm gonna <clears throat> we have to hold it in uh, on the tips first to tie it in so I'm gonna go here and just pull out a little bit of that under fur but be careful not to pull out too many fibers let's get a little bit out I'm gonna come back in just to check my length again so for the length in this fly we're basically just gonna check it see if we can like I'll show you on this guy here we want it to we basically want it to be almost the hook shank in length at least close if you take the back tips you want them to be about there we're gonna transfer that to the rear this one we're tying tonight it's it's, it's a big size for this fly so it's this is gonna be more hopper um, to stone in in appearance so we're gonna wrap in those fibers. There we go. Get the look at that. Okay, so you can see it there. I'm gonna make sure I got those butts bound down well. And then I'm gonna come back into the bend. So I wanna take wraps all the way back so that if I left my thread hanging down there, you can see it against my hand, it's hanging right about at the hook point. Okay, like so. That's where I wanna leave it. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a second here. I'm gonna grab my black foam. So we're gonna start with that first. Um, when I come to tie this in, I'm going to check it, make sure it's not crazy wide. What I want to do is I want to come in and cut <clears throat> just the corners off. So I'm looking at, I don't want to tie in this huge chunk of foam and then work my way back because I want an even underbody. Um, using the dubbing that we're going to use tonight makes that a little bit easier when I, when I wrap that up because I can choose kind of my, uh, my taper on my body using it. Um, but what I want to do to, to tie in this foam is I'm going to take it like so. I'm just going to cut just the corners off. Looks like so. Sorry guys, this sweater is black and it's making it hard to see. We'll go. just take it off. Yeah, I'll take you it know, off one easier. person will be happy. Mr. Lyle. All right, here it is, folks. Let's <laughs> the get the full camera off. on Tim. Maybe <laughs> we'll see some nipple. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to lose the mic here, that's for sure. All right. Let's so that's... A lighter color underneath. Oh, look at that. It's a whole no new nipple. world. No nipple. I win. Okay. <laughs> Jen, Jen didn't win. won't be happy. <laughs> yeah. Skunk fur. Are you using skunk fur? Skunk fur. I don't think it's skunk fur. Yeah, it's see, Zach, this sounds like a Berlin club over here. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's what's the restaurant we eat at in... Uh, it's like Rotten Annie's or something. Oh. The I only like thing that's open. Annie's, yeah, isn't it? Rotten Annie's? I think that's what they call it. I don't know what's wrong with your mic. Did you unplug it or? Don't think so. Good. There it is. Okay. There it is. There it All is. All right. Now I'm A back. club in Berlin. Club in Berlin. <clears throat> okay, so now I've trimmed my foam. Now you can see a little better if it's against me. Um, I just, all I've taken is the corners off and that's going to give me just a little bit of space to tie it in. Okay. So I'm going to come right back, making sure that I have it right about at the point. Now I'm going to take it. I'm going to do a gathering wrap to start with. Shotgun Annie's. Shotgun Annie's. Zach. Oh, nice I miss Zach, you, yeah. Zach. Yeah, I buddy. miss you a lot. So laying that on top, I'm going to grab, try to, so what I'm going to do for, and I don't know, I only tie left handed, so this is, <laughs> this is different. But I, I, skit, I spin my bobbin clockwise so that when I go to take a wrap, you can see my thread jumps Ooh. rearward. Whereas if I were to go the other way, for me, if I go counterclockwise, it jump off the it foam. jumps forward. Ooh, that's a tip. That's a tip. Let's wait, folks. Thursday tip okay. from Tim. Tim's Thursday <laughs> tip. TTT. TTT. Triple T's. Let's check this one out again, folks. Okay, so. Remembering that it's backwards. This is going to be opposite for you. So if you're so right So spin it towards the back of your vise. Yeah. Spin it to the way that you want it to go. Sure. See? Yeah, yeah. It's counterclockwise for you and clockwise for me if you're looking nope. at it. Forget, what if we're using a digital <laughs> clock? <laughs> it's... <laughs> uh, a digital clock, yeah, okay. Spin Anyways. it towards the back of the vise. Yeah. I'm going to spin go. it for me clockwise. That hops my thread rearward for that first wrap. 
I'm gonna grab that foam. And I'm so not that was you spun that towards the front of the vise. Okay. Back. So opposite. Opposite. This is simple. If you're right-handed, it's counterclockwise. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Cam, are you still with us? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay. All so right, I'm not on. putting full pressure right now. I want to get a couple of wraps down before I start tugging on it. Okay. So I got a few in there now. So the problem is if I go too hard too fast, I'm going to end up cutting that foam. Done too quick. Yeah. You don't want to go. You don't want to be done too quick. <laughs> PG, PG. Oh, I remember I watched episode one of season one. Yeah. When we had uh, Jorge. Oh, oh yeah, oh. Jorge. Whew. He was something. Over the blue line, yeah. offside. Offside. So, <clears throat> first foam is in. Um, and I will say this if you're tying this at home, don't use two mil foam. Go to the one mil. One mil is much easier for this pattern. You don't need the two mil. And you will struggle to tie this pattern with two mil. So this is one mil foam. I'm going to do the same thing I did in the last one. I'm going to come in and just trim those corners. So it gives me something to uh, bind in here. And I'm going to go ahead and put this next one in. Oh, I'm going to do my little spin, jumps rearward. Make sure I got some good wraps back onto that foam. Good. And I'm not going to worry about that bump there because I'm going to cover it up with dubbing here shortly. Okay? So. We'll give you a second. Hopefully everybody catch up. You got a beer over there for me somewhere? I oh, do, that's... but while everybody's catching up, why don't we check out a little word from our sponsors? Let's do that. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Family owned and operated. Need local flies? We're your guides. There are a lot of great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. Okay, there we are. Back to Tim. Okay, guys. And me. <laughs> So you might actually notice this, this vice, actually you can't see it. Well, that's a total bummer. Well, it? hey, what could I have? <laughs> Wait a second here. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, this isn't my regular regular vice I'm tying on. Um, we've got two new Norvices. So we got a couple of the colors. Um, we're gonna be, we've got a couple from Norvice. We're gonna be put into the, well, not the test because we use them, we know we love them. Uh, but we got a green one and this awesome burnt orange one. So this is what the new legacy, I C. C. Um, and they come in different colors now. So now my other one looks kind of boring, but um, lots of different colors. We got we got the green and the orange one. Uh, the cool thing with the Legacy C is it already comes with the upgraded hubs, so you're already in the stainless steel. Um, and then from there, you also can upgrade them to the Magnum hubs if you chose to. Like on my other Norvice, I have the Magnum hubs, which I probably will at some point upgrade on this one. Um, and then here we go, I'll show you this guy. That's our other green one. So there's a couple of the Legacy C vices. Um, Awesome, super good. I uh, love tying it on, or tying on it already, and it's just nice that it's uh, kind of new and improved. It does. It's amazing what a little color does to change the whole overall appearance of your vice and stuff. So. And I will talk to that. Yeah. After you're done the hippie stomper. Yeah, yeah. What's cool though, Mark? Okay, he's been following along almost since day one, and this year finally he could get the kit. Yeah. And he just got his kit. Oh, yeah, and he's first, yeah, buddy. Yeah, I he's like, you, this is so you. freaking fun. Finally tying with you all. Isn't that awesome? It's so fun, Mark. It's 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 great, man. If if Mark, if you, uh, <clears throat> I finally got the opportunity this week to listen to a podcast that Dana did with him. Uh, Dana's podcast, uh, Fly Fishing Saves Lives. If you haven't checked it out, you got to do it. Um, there's three or four episodes now. Um, I just got to listen to Mark's. What a story, Mark. Like. The parallels that I felt with you through the whole thing was is amazing. Um, really enjoyed it. Loved your story and appreciate you being open um, and giving us a little insight into your life. Because fly fishing does save lives, and so it's it is really good when you can hear that. Um, so yeah. Anyways, Mark, I'm glad you're here, man. I'm glad you're able to tie along and you got your kit finally. That's great. Okay, so we should be caught up now. So what we're gonna do from here is when we look at this fly. 
So I'm gonna show you this quickly here again. When we look at this fly, this one here in my hand is smaller. You can tell it's obviously smaller than the one we're tying right now. But we wanna cut this fly, let's say about in half. So if I think of my thread being right about here, that's where I'm gonna be folding the foam to the first time. That's where I'm gonna bring my dubbing up to. And then we're actually gonna put a little bit more hackle than is on this guy here. We're gonna put a little bit wider band. So what I want it to look a little bit more like, it's gonna be like this, okay? So a little bit more um, hackle in there. We're, the hackle is really gonna help it ride in the right orientation. Um, it also gives the bugginess of the appearance of legs, okay? So first thing we're gonna do, take this back. We're gonna start by putting on some dubbing. So you- Question you, here. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, just cause it was about the vice. Yeah. Uh, hey Zeus was says, do they come as a lefty? Um, so what I should- This is- this, <laughs> this is left. Yeah, this is a left. It's currently set as left. Um, but what Dana will show you is when you get it, um, understanding this system is put on a table of some kind. Right now we just have it mounted on our full tying table, but Norvice sells tables um, and there's lots of different tables you can buy um, for them. Like ours. <laughs> yeah, like exactly, like our fly tying tables. Um, so as you can see right here, I currently have two vices. Um, and depending on how you orient them on the table, Left-handed, right-handed. So you have a post, right? So imagine this is on a table, so this is for me for left-handed. Um, I tie this way, well then, all you do is you mount it on the other side of the table, and now I've got a right-handed vise, okay? So they're ambidextrous. There's nothing that makes them left or right-handed, it just depends on the orientation of how you put them on your table, okay? So that's kind of one of the cool things about it is they're very, I actually have, uh, what's that other one I have? Um, the other vise. Regal, I have the Regal Revolution. And that's one of the downfalls of that vice is I, I can't at least figure out how to make, <laughs> to make it left-handed. So using your hand, this, my lever should be on the front and I, I can't figure out how to do it. If someone knows, that's also a great tip. Let me know, because I haven't figured it out. Um, so another, another great vice, but I like how the ease and simpleness of um, this Norvice is, and when you, when you look at it, it doesn't look like there's a lot there, but trust me, it's, it's packing, a, packing a lot of heat. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Eventually we're gonna put dubbing on this hook. Okay, this is an attractor fly. Yes, it is an attractor fly, absolutely. Uh, post, uh, Brent, post width, that's a good question. I believe the recommendation is 14 inches. Um, I have mine set at 14 inches. You can extend it to, I think, 17 16, or 18. 16, Yeah, because uh, what the problem is, is on the bobbins, they only have, they go to a certain distance before they need to come back. And so if you go, if you have them too far apart, when you rest your bobbin over there, it's too far. So my, my lucky number is 14. I like that distance. That's what I use. <clears throat> okay. So take, we got lots of dubbing here, enough to tie about 50 flies. We're, we're not going to be um, super stingy with it. I'm going to take a big pinch. And this is like the dubbing noodles we've been doing already, guys. Um, I'll show you kind of at this angle so you can see a little better. I'm going to grab it. I'm coming in on my thread and I'm spinning it on. Maybe wet your fingers a bit. Remember, my fingers keep moving in the same direction. So I'm here, okay? I'm not going like this, because that works against itself. I need to go, 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 okay? Now I'm gonna make a dubbing noodle that's a few inches long, three, four inches long. And I, don't, I honestly don't really care if it's super um, tapered or anything like that, because we're gonna, we're gonna add a bunch of dubbing on here and kind of make this overall taper look the way it is. So I wanna start that dubbing right back on that first bump. Get a couple wraps up there. And as you go, you can pull it, tighten it up. If you get too much in one spot, you just kind of pull it down with your finger. And you can get it even back out again. And remember, I want to go all the way up um, to that halfway point on the hook. And really, the world's your oyster on what you use for dubbing here. Yeah, the, to be honest, the original pattern calls for um, flash. It, call, it just calls for, like you take strands of flash, like a flashaboo, and you wrap it up the hook just to give it some shine. So it, really the, the possibilities are endless as far as what you use for this material. Uh, we just chose dubbing because it's, it's an easy thing to create a nice even underbody. Um, you have to be really well tapering with your um, your thread to get the uh, 
an even underbody when you do it the other way. <clears throat> is it functional for a dry dropper? Perfect. This thing floats this is, yeah. <laughs> like an indicator. You could put a huge bead head underneath this um, and it's going to work really well. Okay. So that's about my halfway point. I'm happy with that. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do. Um, so just one sec. Yep. As soon as Tim gets this fly done, we'll go back to talking about vices. Yeah. Um, just there's a couple more questions, but we'll walk through this and then uh, we'll carry on with the vice conversation. Yeah, no worries, guys. We love we love chatting vices. We're, uh, yeah, we'll get to it. Okay, so got my thread here. I'm going to fold first that purple one over. I'm going to hold it with this other hand. I just like to take a, a nice loose wrap, basically allowing just the tension of the bobbin hanging to secure it. Now I'm going to switch back to my other finger, okay? I'm not gonna tug super hard on that yet, but what I like to do is take one more wrap and then come pinch right where I put those on, and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna tug down a bit, adding a little extra pressure each time. Again, if I go full pressure on the first one, all it's gonna do is cut through that foam, and then I've broken it off. Jed Lyle, <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> you said he. Oh, that because we know <laughs> we know it's who it is. Steven. Yes, <laughs> but... that glue tastes great. <laughs> <laughs> and Jamie goes. <laughs> It's better if you sniff it. <laughs> like I said, we are a dysfunctional yeah. group of people. We'll get through this together, guys. A we'll divine intervention has brought us all together. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing with the black, guys. I'm going to come over top. I'm going to take that nice first loose wrap, let it hang. I'm going to probably go four turns in total each one just putting a little bit more pressure and squeezing down so i'm squeezing here and the reason i'm holding this is if i let go and pull that foam's going to want to turn okay it's going to want to spin around the hook and i'm trying to prevent that from happening okay so make sure i got it nice and secure i can see the underside looks good and see right there is why excuse me why i went a little thinner with the purple because i want to see the black out over the edges of the purple from the underside okay it's like a double accented foam now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these guys back, both of them, get my thread in front and work my thread up towards the eye. Now I don't want to crowd this eye guys. I don't want to be right up here. Okay. I want to leave myself about an eye length behind it because we're going to whip finish on this and have to pull a bunch of foam back. So it's important to leave yourself a little bit of space because as we all know, when we crowd the eye, nothing good comes of it. Okay. All right. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now I'm up an eye length behind the eye. I'm going to lay that purple foam back down. I'm going to take that same, same exact sequence I did last time, pinning it down. Okay. I'm going to pin that down there, squeeze it a bit. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to, we're going to bury all this foam, but first I need to do the same thing with the black. So I'm going to pull the black foam over, take a few wraps. And now that I've got that fairly secured in there, um, and guys, I should also say this is enough foam to tie tie two flies So I'm gonna snip it off here and then you just set these two pieces aside to retie it Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just now gonna start gathering some of this foam Going back over it And if you pull too hard <laughs> ooh, Things here. You're just setting some mood lighting here. Okay, you just hold tight <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ooh. We told you yeah lights will die wait for the disco uh, the disco ball is gonna start here in no time <clears throat> that was weird. That was weird, hey? Good timing. And actually, now that I've I've gone over this, I I can tell I already don't like how much room I've left, or that I haven't left as much room behind the eyes I would like. We don't have to crowd that at all, okay? So I'm gonna come back even a little further. Give myself that full eye length of space. This makes it easier when we go to to whip finish this fly, okay? So let's redo the process that I already done. And all I'm doing is I'm going to start burying that foam, okay? Getting it squeezed down real good. That's so a close you, call. Yeah. 
So when you look to the underside, you'll know if you got your ratios right, if, if, if the stuff you've buried, so I'll show it here like this, if it looks like it's half and half, it looks like I'm pretty close. We're not including the hook eye, we're including that space behind it. So you want it to be about 50-50. It's gonna seem like a lot of hackle, but you, you want it. <laughs> Mike Hawkins, <laughs> I thought I went blind for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, you did not. You did not go blind. Okay, next piece of our puzzle here. We are going to grab our legs. So we've got these white legs here. Okay, so we're gonna take one and two of them off. We gave you guys lots of extra legs, so don't worry if you lose a couple. <laughs> I love the comments when things go bad. <laughs> <laughs> don't crowd the eye, keep some COVID distance. Yes, COVID distance. Now we need some disco lights. Yeah. So what's I got up? David Spencer's here. Hey Spence, what's up bud? Late to the party, Late to the party. as usual. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take that leg and fold it around my thread. Okay, I'm going to match up those tips, pull up on it. Now, this is that trick I've showed you before, guys. I get to decide where it goes, right, with my thread. So I've doubled it over. All I'm going to do is place it in the middle. And now I'm going to do the near side to you first. So you can see I'm going to pull it to that far side. And now I'm going to bury that leg all the way up to there. We want to keep it right off kind of the side of the fly. We don't want it to, to be turning under or turning over. And I'll come up and do this one as well. And all we're going to do once we have this done is just repeat it on the other side. So then I'll do the, the near side to myself with, the, with another set of legs. So again, all I did was take it and wrapped it around my thread, pulled my thread up, placed my leg on the middle, do one or two wraps, not too tight, so I can still pull it to my side. So when you pull it, it look like so, and I'm just gonna even it out, just like I did with the last one. Okay. It still might be up for the worst background music. Yeah, I don't know, it's been pretty good today. I've had my foot stomping a bit, and that's new, so. <clears throat> and don't, don't worry about covering up all that white on those legs, because it's gonna get covered up with hackle here in a moment. Okay. Everybody good? Do you know SOS's? Not that I can see. All right. Okay. So <clears throat> next piece here is we got some of this Antron yarn. This stuff. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to get it right about in the middle. We're going to take a full piece. We gave you plenty, so don't worry about take a, take a full length of this stuff. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to fold it over my thread. So I know it's pretty even when it goes on. This is gonna go right on top of the fly, okay? I'm gonna separate it. I'm gonna wrap over all the way back towards that bump. And then I'm gonna come forward with it up towards the front segment. Pogues is in the house. What's up, brother? He's digging the close up of your hands. Ooh, my poorly manicured fingers. That's why they're so called po manicured. So Pogues, why don't you tell Dana what you did today? Oh, he told me. Did he tell you already? Not today, but he told yesterday? me yesterday. Nice. Oh, wait, hold on, Tim. Tim, pause the show. Guys, <laughs> pause the show. What's up? Hold on, SOS. Uh, Jim James William Crawford <laughs> is in the house. Okay? All right, all right. So he would like us to start over. Mm. <clears throat> so, what Jim says we do. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. I love you, buddy. But well, we made him feel special. We did. Continue on. Good. we Will do. <laughs> okay. So once I got everything oriented like this, what I'm going to do now, and then the, kind of the last piece, the big piece of this is putting in the hackle. Okay. So we gave you some, we're going to use a grizzly, grizzly hackle tonight. Um, size is not super important here. We uh, don't use your good dry fly hackle on this because we're going to trim off the bottom anyways. Okay. So don't, don't waste your good stuff. Um, this is more like a bugger, bugger size um, hackle, okay? So don't, yeah, don't get crazy. What I'm gonna do though, to, to kind of prep it, is I'm gonna peel off some fibers down near the butt where the stem is quite thick. Now, when you're tying in, uh, when you're tying in hackle, there's lots of people kind of have different opinions on how they like doing it. But what I like to do, it's not as important on a big fly like this, but when you get to tying dry flies, you, you need it. So it's good to, it's good to practice here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and cut a little triangle. I'll cut it first and then I'll show you what it looks like. All 
I can get them to cut. So as you can see it right there, I've left those little bit of barbs. That color is almost hard for you to see it on. I need to put the black shirt back on. So maybe you can see it better right there. Yeah, right there. You see how there's those barbs on there I've left? That's what I'm gonna tie in with. And that's actually what that's doing is, it's, is that's helping you have something more to bind down that stem with and hopefully it's not gonna slip out on you. Okay, so now which way do we want this to be oriented? So you've got your underside, um, your shiny sides on the top, your dull sides on the bottom. So which side of the feather do I point, want pointed in which direction? For this one, I'm gonna take, uh, I want the dull side to be pointing rearward. So I want the top of the feather pointed towards the front of the fly, okay? So I'm gonna work my thread back to this back bump here and that's where I'm gonna tie in. So all I'm gonna do is lay it, lay it across the top here. I'm gonna put those wraps right through those little bit of barbs that I left for myself. And I'm gonna just work my way down and I'm gonna bind. I can tell that stem's gonna be a little long to bind in that gap, so I'm gonna trim it a little bit. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bind it down. Put some good thread wraps. You really don't want that pulling out because if that pulls out, the rest of the fly is not gonna be so good. Okay? So now that I got that tied in back here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go forward um, leave my thread right in front of your, your front section of yarn. I'm just going to do a half hitch and say Just so I can get my bobbin out over here and I can rotate my... And when you, when you grab that, that stem is going to be quite thick at the rear. So when you grab your feather, just kind of put some a bend in it. So it's going to kind of torque that, uh, that feather a little bit and it's going to help this process start. Okay, so now we're ready. Let's uh, let's get this hackle wrapped up, and don't go sh don't go stingy on the hackle. This fly stays up, looks good, looks buggy because of the amount of hackle we put on. So really, uh, really get it in there. Okay, I'm looking for my hackle pliers. Um, hackle pliers not def hugely important when you got a longer feather, but I like to keep them in my hand so that if I get to the point where I feel like I need to grab them, they're there. Okay, so nice touching wraps, even almost overlapping at times. We want to make sure that we have this heavily hackled. We should be using most of the feather up. So I can tell and it gets a little stingy. I'm going to go in there now and grab with my hackle pliers. Like so. Okay. Nice heavily hackled. I'm going to leave that there and tie that feather off. So like when any other material we tie it off, we need to do a wrap in front of it, a wrap behind it back in front of it again. Now we know it's locked in. I repeat the process one more time just to be sure. Then I can snip out the tip. Being very careful not to get your thread in the process. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my thread in front of everything. So I want my thread to come up and get right to that eye. Okay. So I switched the music yeah, I see that. Someone's like, well, the music's been great. I see the comment after. <laughs> of course. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'll go back. And then I decide to go back, and someone's like, wow, this music is so relaxing. So I quit. <laughs> Just can't win. I'm out of here. You can't win. What okay. if you don't have hackle pliers? Uh, if you don't what have if you pliers, don't have hair stacker? Then you got to win one. What if you don't have a bodkin? <laughs> well... It's a good question. It's a good question, Dana. Why don't you tell us? What, what do you do? What do you do? I don't know. I'm asking people. Put what wax do you do? Your fingers so you don't slip through. It's a good question. It's what good do question. you do? I might have a solution. Mm. Stay tuned. Okay. Staying tuned. So guys, we're pretty much done this. What we need to do, all the hard work is done. We just need to do some trimming. Oh, I think you it. are done. That's <laughs> not done. Don't Tarantula on steroids. Yes. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go Use in there with finish. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, get your wife to spin the vice and you jump around the vice. Yeah, that works. Yeah. It's a rotating vice. <laughs> <laughs> so all I've done, guys, is I've kind of pulled everything out of the way. And I'm just going to do a three or four turn whip finish. Get that locked in. Make sure I didn't trap any legs. If you trap some hackle fibers, don't worry about it. You can trim them out. And like I said, we're trimming the bottom anyways. So before we do anything else, flip that upside down. Let's go in and put some 
some type of resin on those thread wraps, okay? So I'm gonna go in. I'm just using a. Remember the days. Of Rosina? Rosina. Rosina is no longer. Well, she. She gone. She We're gone. gonna have to figure out how to bring her back. Yeah, there's some. We don't want to. We don't want to lose anything. <laughs> Doug said, "Use super glue on your fingers for grip." <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that works that's too. That's exactly why we had everybody pre-glue that foam. Because you don't want to <laughs> so do this. No, we needed their fingers yeah. sticky. Oh yes, that's true. Keep them sticky and ready to go. Okay, guys. So we're gonna trim this foam. Um, how how long do we want that foam? We want almost the same gap as the hook gap is the width that we want that to be in front of that hook eye. So I gotta come in and kind of look at it. I'm not gonna really over science this at all. I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a lip there. Like so, okay? I'm not gonna trim off those corners. I like them the way they are, okay? Nice blocky looking head. And this is also what's gonna help it float. So it's it's got almost a flare like a, a gurgler almost, right? Um, oh, the gurgler. gurgler. Yeah. Bring okay, that let's, fly let's back go in soon. And, let's go in and trim our yarn. So. On the back piece of yarn, we're gonna pull it all together. We're gonna to take our scissors and lay them on this bump. And we want it to be about half way back on that back bump is where we're gonna lay our scissors, pull the pull the yarn down on it, and cut. Back one's nice and short. It's about half that, that bump, okay? The front one, we want it to extend just slightly higher than the hackle, okay? So it's gonna be just a little longer than our other one. I like to leave it, this is more of our cider one anyways. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer, like so. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Comments, bottom. No, me, I on what? Okay, just so you all know, me, on my own, cut my thread and finished a fly. <laughs> Cam, <laughs> Cam wants You did it. Our work here is done, folks. That's been another episode yeah. of Thursday Night Live. Give me a mic. We'll see dog. you <laughs> next week. <laughs> yeah. uh, success. <laughs> We're never back. We no. conquered. That was our one job. <laughs> well, those legs look interesting on this fly already. How about that? The so, Tarantula. Length on these is not. It's just a preference, guys. I I like to do one side first. I'm gonna leave it about like so. And then when I look at the other side, I can kind of compare it off of it. Just don't overcut them. If you start going too crazy, you uh, you end up cutting all your legs away. And if you want, tie two legs out the back. Tie them like a joint in a grasshopper leg. Yeah, really. Like it's like we said, this is one of those limit. patterns that's like, there's so much you can do with it. So the last piece of the puzzle on this fly itself is we need to trim that hackle on the bottom, okay? And we want to trim it virtually flush, okay? So make sure you get your legs out of the way because you don't want to do that. Um, so we're not trimming the sides though, okay? So I'm gonna take my scissors in and I'm gonna come right in and only have them like just barely barely open, okay? Because I don't want to cut everything. Why don't everything. you tell us where you got those scissors? Let them speak for themselves. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Show sure are nice. Yeah. Nobody likes scissors that don't cut. That's <laughs> off. <laughs> so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim those off virtually flush. But we don't wanna cut too far up and take away the side ones because what those side ones are doing is giving us stabilization. So there, you can see the bottom is virtually flat, like so. I'm happy with that. Okay, that is your hippie stomper. Okay guys, wicked fly, hopefully that went well for you. Um, if not, please try again, go get some foam. Very few materials to tie this fly and you can do it in so many different sizes, colors, all that good stuff. So great pattern to keep in your box, especially if you're headed to the mountains looking for some uh, cutthroat trout. Yeah? Yeah, so when we, when we made the samples, we just barred the legs with a black marker. Yeah, just a black marker. So you can take white legs, just like we did with white thread, and color it all you want. You can get red, any color. Markers, Sharpies are, there you go. You got some there. Yeah, I just have a couple different examples here, guys. Like this is just white. Um, these, the ones we put in your kit, those are actually drawn on barred. These ones are purchase barred. It really doesn't, doesn't matter, right? Um, the original pattern calls for white on black, so it doesn't, uh, or black on white, sorry. So just bar them up, 
super easy. But the nice thing about the white legs, and I always have white legs in my tying stuff, is you can literally pick whatever color you want to make them. Do you have a marker? Um, I do, yeah. Give me a moment. What I'm thinking is I can show you guys something. Like a permanent one? Yeah, just... Hold tight, stand by. Just, I was just gonna clamp them in the vise and just, do you have any legs with you? Oh yeah. Just how to like pre-bar them. Yeah. So I'll show you real quick here how we can do that. And like, for instance, there I got three on here, right? Like there's three sets of legs together. Clamp them in your vise. I would just pull it out, but don't pull hard, don't stretch. Just pull it till it's at its end. Then I'll use, let's say, brown here. I'm just gonna come in. Um, when I come on the leg, I'm gonna go on one side and the other. Yeah. One sec here. And then, like, for instance, I have, this is a bigger Sharpie. It's a bigger tip Sharpie, which works well. But I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna go over and show you what, with the black one, with it that's a thin point, right? So you can do either or. It's kind of hard to do from the back side, but you can make your bars and your legs. All the way up. And then when you separate them out, you've got your bar, right? So you got barring on the legs. Both sides. So it's a... It's, there's lots of different ways to go about it. Um, yes, it is probably easier if you were to go and uh, just purchase barred legs. But the white ones are nice because you at any time can just take another marker and you can change it up however you want, right? So I can just go in, change the color. I can make a wider bar if I choose, right? Like just ultimately variable, however you want to do it. It's pretty simple. Lots of different ways to do it, so. <clears throat> But yeah, you can use that to uh, to go in and bar up those legs. But yeah, guys, this this uh, specific pattern, what we like about it is just how how variable it is. There's just so much that you can do with it, and uh, yeah, I mean, pick different sizes, challenge yourself. Yes, this is a really this is probably as big as I would tie it. Um, but then after this, go back and challenge yourself and try to tie it with uh, on a size 12 or or go down to a size 18 and just see. Um, it, it, it is a little bit more challenging for sure, but it's just the design, the design is to mess around with it, right? So <laughs> All right. we're in the middle of technical difficulties here. One of our, one There's of our cameras is, uh, is struggling. Yeah. I'll okay. Get, hold I'll, tight <laughs> I'll get from it. our sponsors. With the amount of time we spend in front of our vices, don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Family owned and operated. Need local flies? We're your guides. There are a lot of great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. There, fixed hey, it. <laughs> that was easy. Sometimes it just takes a good word from some good people. <laughs> yeah, <t -shirt. laughs> you can get back to whatever <laughs> we you were talking about. about. So yeah, anyways, we finished off showing you how to bar some legs. Um, really good little uh, little tip you can use. And there's obviously so many different colors of legs. This pattern, can, that pattern can vary. The next pattern we're doing, um, we're gonna tie it with like floss. You can bar the floss if you choose to. Like, it's, there's just so much variation in leg styles. Some people um, don't like using the thinner legs. They like round legs, not square ones. It's like there's a whole bunch of opinions. Just and it all depends. They all sit different in the water. Mm -hmm. They're. <clears throat> I think if you use a stiffer leg, you can fish choppier water. Um, 
but how technical do you really need to get? They're trout. Who they're knows? Trout. They're instinctive. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a big so statement, but. we asked a question back here. Um, so Mike did it. Mike Demont. Nice. Um, your teenager wants to know what playlist you're listening to. Well, we can't give that away. <laughs> it's just because we don't even know. Because if we knew. But what I wanted to ask you guys was, what do you do if you don't have the proper tools? You still don't know. Well, our friends <laughs> at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop have a solution. Have, has solution. They've donated this Dr. Slick tying gift set mm -hmm. with a bunch of tools. Oh, just let me remove the stickers. And they want one of you guys to have it. So awesome set. I think what we'll do is give it away tonight. That's a good idea. Why not? And uh, somebody out there who doesn't have all the tools, let's give it to you. Mm -hmm. And who would that be? Well, what we're going to do is we're not at 100 shares. So when we get to 100 shares, we will do the giveaway. So... If Tim just starts tying the next fly, I will watch the shares, and when they hit a hundred or over, we'll give them away. That sounds like a great idea. That's a pretty freaking awesome gift. These those guys, RockyMountainFlyShop.net. Check yeah. them out. You can well, all of our kits are sold out. So. <laughs> yeah, you can't buy our kits anymore. But <laughs> I was gonna say you could buy our kits there. Um, our tables are there, plus all of their items, I believe, are now on the, the online store. Online store. Yeah. So we'll give this away in just a few minutes. So, Tim, you get tying. Sure. Hit the share button. Get your grandma in here watching with <laughs> <Yeah>. us. <laughs> if that's the only person on your <laughs> Facebook, that's fine, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's get back to the worst fly on the Bow River. Worst fly to tie for the Bow River. And okay. the fish don't like it either. <laughs> yeah, fish don't like it at all. Okay, so if we've kind of done things like we'd hoped to start with, our stuff should be dry now. We should have two layers of foam with that fur on the underside. Um, so what what we gotta do next is we gotta shape this foam. Um, we gotta get it prepared to be on this hopper. So first things first, go ahead and grab the hook that you're Is it cold use. in here? <laughs> Those are soft. That's soft, okay? Oh, come on. The, it's, it, the problem is, so when you're a super hairy-chested person and you wear a shirt that's quite staticky, it just like <laughs> sucks, okay? It was me that was asking. <laughs> oh, shoot. Eugene had a good point. I was going to talk about the vices. Oh, yes. Um, okay, so I did want to make this a fly tying show, but... <laughs> So Tim's had his Norvice for, you got it about this time last year? No. Before Christmas? No. Were you all season two on all the Norvice? All season two was on Norvice. Yeah. Okay. So it's so, been a couple, yeah, two years. So secretly, I resented him. <laughs> and I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to touch it. Because I know the fear of touching really cool things, and then you have to get one. So I... He literally never touched my vice. I literally... I didn't even put a hook in there. So we got a couple vices from Norvice, and they showed up right after Christmas. And Tim wasn't here, so I thought, hey, I can try to learn this without him making fun of me. <laughs> no. Found one of my flies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you tried to sneak it over there. I just <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh. Anyways, so I attached it to the table and sat down here. And this, I know Norvi sponsored stuff, and I'm not trying to sit here and sell it. It's an expensive product. But why don't I sit over there and tie? I truly don't enjoy tying a lot. Okay, but there's two things that I noticed in the past week. I still haven't touched the Norvice bobbin, but 
let's see what showed up from shore. Yeah, so we okay. got a bunch of tools from shore. So this is very counterintuitive of my personality because I like to buy expensive things, knowing that good okay. quality things, if you go to the other camera, um, we can show it in there. If, if you buy stuff that's good, you buy it once. So That's I bad. probably haven't spent more than $15 on a bobbin yeah. and I've gone through quite a few. And so that bobbin showed up and that Norby showed up and I'm telling you folks, if you're not, if you can't get into the Norby's and they're, you can't get into their bobbins, that shore bobbin was absolutely <laughs> awesome. freaking butter. I just sat there and wrapped thread around hooks and threw them out. <laughs> yeah. And then I sat there and I spun dubbing on thread for probably two straight days. And I fell in love again with fly tying because I tie a lot of guide flies for guiding, but I can't say I've ever enjoyed it. Well, when you get the right products, it's a lot of fun. So if you're sitting there struggling with a really inexpensive vice and cheap tools, try, I'm encouraging you and there's no benefit to me is do yourself a favor and just up the game a bit, whatever that means. I think that bobbin is $34 Canadian. So like 25 American, go get one. And if you get a Norvice, I don't know. There's a lot of good vices. But tying on those cheap vices, it ruined it for me. And I might say, I'll be back there one day. <laughs> <laughs> might be. And that's just straight from the heart, an honest review that crappy tools really hinder the fun of tying. Yeah. So uh, whatever that means, go down to your local fly shop, ask them if you can try some bobbins, load some thread. I don't know why they wouldn't let you despite COVID. Bring yeah. some sanitizer, clean them up. Try some of the vices. I also don't know why they wouldn't let you do that, but there's a vice for everybody and good tools make a huge difference. Look at Steve's comment. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> my, my wife just rolled her eyes listening to you. Oh, great. More well, fishing gear to buy. <laughs> um, what we can also do is... Uh, for $650, I can give you eight hours of counseling <laughs> Yeah. on my boat, <laughs> you and your wife. <laughs> I see what you did there. That was good. That was good. And it's we like can fish. Yeah. It is. It works you through some tough There times. is. Some days it is. Yeah, guys, um, it's a, that's something that actually can't be stated enough. And he actually said to me, I think it was yesterday, he's like, but what do people do if, if they can't afford a good vice? And I just, I was silent because I don't know what the answer is. I, no, I worked from the bottom with a, the, from a brat, like from a, whatever that, those Wapsie kits literally was my first vice yeah. up to what I use now. And there were a lot of times I almost stopped tying because it's just not fun. I did like literally stop tying. You're pulling on, you're putting thread wraps on, you pull on your hook and the, and the, and the actual vice can't hold your hook and it falls out or moves. Like I couldn't tie on that anymore. There's no way. Mm -hmm. So it's. I mean, maybe we're just spoiled, but in my opinion, if you're going to spend your we, money, spend we it are on spoiled. Tools. Yeah, I, we're spoiled. I agree. 100%. But spend but, money on tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Man, I just want to <laughs> grab that bobbin again and put just it in my hand. Just want to grab that bobbin and just put it in my hand. Get to work so. again. <laughs> <laughs> you wait. That thing's going to kill it at the bike racks yeah. this year. Yeah, right. It will. You just watch. Okay, so question here. Uh, vices did we cover what we needed um, that vice is a left or right-handed you just literally switch you drill a hole in a table a piece of wood a fly Kia get your favorite oh, craftsman yeah. to build you a table whatever it is yes John your 1990 it might be obsolete uh, so Lisa how far in advance of the show a day or two um, like oh, missing. that's a cool kit. Is there any way that you could create a shopping list for a first time tire? I know I need to get glue and some different types of thread first time tire. 100%. We will yeah. do that. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Um, we will. 
Mm-hmm. So there is, if you go into RockyMountainFlyShop.net, they have those Wopsy kits, mm-hmm. which are full of a whole bunch of dubbing, some pretty basic materials to get started. A big reason that we did Thursday Night Live was to supply enough material that people could tie a fly like this and not have to go spend 50 or 60 bucks on material that would eventually make you tie a hundred. Like myself, I get bored quickly and I want to tie one or two, or I just want to try different samples of flies, see if I like it. And while doing that, I learn a lot. So Lisa, can you send an email to me? Info at flyfishingbowriver.com. That way, I'm reminded, and that's a fantastic that's idea. A that's a good idea. video for the Fly Fishing Academy. Yeah. Um, it's really good information to have because it, it is intimidating when you walk into the store as a new tire. And let's be honest, I mean, fly shops are there to sell you things, so they're going to sell you as much as they can. Um, but if you're on a little bit of budget even, it's, it's good to know the essentials that you need to go grab. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> so the shore bobbin is not an auto bobbin. Norvice is the only one that has the retractable bobbin and yeah, that's pretty one. cool. Why is it cool? Because sometimes when you're making a dubby noodle, whatever, you've got to like grow another arm somewhere and it's retract your thread. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things you almost can't explain until you use it and then you're like, whoa, close your mind. Yeah, okay. it's great. Uh, okay, so Jeff is using his wife's account. Um, you're not alone. <laughs> so there's about <laughs> yeah. 10 people that I know of that are using their wife's account. And so we're going to get shirts made for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Okay. Um, Robert awesome. started with a cheap vice that came six vices later, still having fun. So... You don't jump into something like this and be like, I'm an epic tire. There's a progression and it's more fun when it's an earned progression. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, inexpensive vice at the start is fantastic. If it's going to hold your hook, it's going to get you to a point where that as you move up the ladder and you hit something like this, your mind's going to be blown like mine was. Mm -hmm. I think that's a fair statement. Yeah. Uh, Feel free to chirp away. (laughs) Yes. Will do. (laughs) Can all the Facebook wives, husbands, (laughs) whatever, we'll find the name for you guys. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. There we go. Uh, Tim, let's get back to the paths. All right. Back to the paths. Okay, guys. So we're at the stage right now where we just got a chunk of foam. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to get that hook in our vise. Okay, so that we can do some measuring of how we're going to cut this thing. So, get your hook secured. And if you've got one, guys, um, scissors is what we're going to do to use some of the cutting on, but we're also going to use a very sharp blade. So for myself, I've got a, um, it's like a craft scalpel. If you don't have one of these, even uh, um, just a regular razor blade that we cut hair with, that would be also useful. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever else you whatever got a razor else, blade yeah. for yeah, on your I table. Know, I'm trying to think what else is a razor blade for, but cutting up uh, chalk dust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if you can look at the pattern that's provided in there for you, you can see the general shape, right? That we're trying to taper that body a bit, so it it doesn't go to a point in the back end, but it does taper out. And that starts from about halfway up the fly. Okay, so when I think of the overall length, we can see that that hangs off about a hook gap beyond the hook itself. So when we're measuring this, we know we want um, the eye of the hook to land just under the face of the hopper. So when I lay this, I'm gonna take my foam and it's laid on top of here. I'm gonna gauge, okay, so I'll show you from an underside view. I want my eye to be right about there. Okay, so I've got that marked. I'm gonna come back up and I know that I want it to just barely overhang, right? So I wanna be about about in here. Not an exact science here, guys, it, and it's not crucial if it's too long, too short, but we do want it a little bit extending. So once I gather that measurement in my head, I'm gonna mark it with my finger so I can see. 
And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out. I've got it marked. I'm just gonna cut the foam right there, okay? So now I've got the actual length that I'm gonna use for the fly, okay? So from this from this point, and it, it's, depending on the hook size, this is gonna look a little different. And it's okay if it's a little longer, a little shorter. Um, we're just, we're generalizing here. For the head itself, we're not doing a ton of stuff to it. All we're really doing is gonna create a, a flat surface because we are gonna put some eyes on it. So if you look at this guy here, the one you have in your kit, um, the head is just barely shaped. So we're just gonna take a little bit off um, the corners up at, up at the head. So pick a side you want to be the head. All I'm gonna do is take just a little bit off, just gonna flatten that out just a bit so I have some eye uh, available space to put the eyes on. So you can see a little better from that angle. And it, it isn't easy cutting through all these layers. Um, definitely understand that. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. But we wanna create just an even shape on both sides. So once you feel like you've got that even shape, pretty close to it, okay? I'm gonna be happy with that. I'm gonna get my eyes on there at the end, okay? Now remember, about halfway back from the foam is when we're gonna start making a taper on this. So what I like to do, and it's kinda of gonna be difficult to show you from this angle, I'm not gonna be able to actually cut at this angle, but I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna come from the back, and I'm gonna basically mark where my halfway point is on the foam itself. So I know it's right about up here, and that's where I'm gonna angle that cut, um, basically to go from here up to that halfway point, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Okay, so I'll cut this quick and then I'll show you what that looks like. Again, it's not an exact science, so don't freak out, but just don't um, don't take off more than you need to because you can't put foam back on. Okay, so I've just cut one side. Okay, so from the, this side, looks like so. And I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, it's not perfect. It's not supposed to be exactly perfect unless you have a cutter like an, an actual cutter that's gonna punch out this foam, you're never gonna get it completely perfect. Try to get the sides so they're virtually even, but again, like I said, when you're doing this with a couple pieces of foam, it's, it's not easy to get through. But that's the general shape that we want. We want that little bit of a tail, and then we want the bulk of the body. We want it to taper out in the back end, um, and then the rest of it, we want, we want to be fairly solid up at the front. Okay, I'm just gonna take just a smidge off just to even this out, and then we'll get to the rest of this. Now you're probably, probably already noticing if you have any fur left on this fly that you have to be gentle with it because it will come off on you if you aren't, okay? So this is what I've got, this is what I'm left with. So I've got my shape, so I know when I sit this on here, that's gonna be the shape of my fly. Um, I like it. Now this is where that razor blade comes in, okay? So I really need, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put a bunch of stuff on this hook before, I'm not putting dubbing down. This is sticking where it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna put a good thread base down, but I'm not gonna put anything else. So I'm gonna put a thread base, a little bit of glue, and then put it on, and then it's done. You're not getting to move that anymore. So we wanna make an actual cut on the underside of this. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna be using this for. I'm gonna show you what it looks like, but I'm not gonna try to cut it up here in the air. I'm gonna put it on the table, because it's try easier. It. Yeah, I got Band-Aids. Yeah. <laughs> the paramedic is the one with the cutting utensils. So I'm <laughs> about 19 years retired from EMS. Yeah, let's, let's not but, uh, uh, gamble on that one. So what I'm going to do is we know we wanted to set that eye right about there. So Maybe gonna... we should ask the people. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's some things you don't go to the people for. Cam? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start a cut right there, and I'm going to bring it all the way down and into that tail. Not all the way to the back. I don't want to cut all the way out the back, but I want to bring it pretty deep into that tail. Now, how deep do I want to cut? I want to cut through the fur and the first layer of foam. Okay get through those two pieces and we're laughing. Okay, so I'm gonna put it down on the table so I can do this without hurting anybody. And yes, this is gonna be a lot easier if you have some type of razor blade or sharp tool of like that. So if you don't and you're just using a knife, it's, it might not be easy. Wait, people <laughs> want us to vote. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no, we're not voting on this. I'm already cutting. I'm not dying today. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm just working that cut, and once I get get the cut started, I can even go in there and kind of spread it and just see that I've got through into that next foam because I need that hook to go and sit in there because we want this to almost wrap around that hook. Um, bury it. Yeah, bury it. Great word. So a couple things, a couple things to note here. 
Um, if you go too deep, you will have a short hook gap. Yeah. Okay, now that's the gap from the shank of the hook to the point of the hook. And why does that matter? Well, <laughs> I can tell you. <laughs> the fit, you can't hook the fish. So they eat your fly, but there's too much foam in the way of the hook gap. And so you get a lot of eats. <laughs> you, just... like you don't catch a lot of fish. <laughs> there's uh, been a lot of frustrating days, <laughs> to say the least. And you know that's why. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, be careful. So I've got my slit cut. Oh, that's a terrible word. That's a, um, that also looks <laughs> bad. <laughs> I'm going to place this foam down here, and we're going to move on to the, to the hook itself, okay? Let's tie a size 6 Prince Nymph. Yeah. Okay. David Blackmon, welcome, brother. This is. It is 100% for sure. <laughs> okay. All I'm going to do is get my thread started up at the eye. I'm going to lay a nice thread base all the way back into the bend, okay? Wow, it's mesmerizing. Not super crucial that you cover up absolutely everything, but we just want as much to bind to as possible. <laughs> <laughs> just, what? This if comments. Listen to their comments. Yeah. Spread the cheeks to check the depth. <laughs> Jen Lyle says, that's how you sabotaged me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we oh, need a man. fan in here. Yeah, it it's is hot. Feel, it's feeling warm. It's hot. Okay, so now that I've laid a good thread brace down, I if you if you take a look at your fly, you'll notice there is no thread wraps on this until up at the front half of the fly. So it's literally, if you put the center of the fly or center of the fly right there, that's where our first thread wrap is. So we want to bring our thread back to center. Okay, that makes me a little crazy, but that's why we're relying along upon a little glue and it to set well off the front wraps. Okay, so I'm gonna go grab my a little bit of super glue. I'm, I'm not going crazy here, guys, because if you put too much on, you won't be able to spread those cheeks and <laughs> get it on the hook. <laughs> okay. This is PG yeah. for pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. So just a little, little light layering there. Okay, now, <laughs> you just got to go and uh, make sure. I kind of come like from this angle, so I guess from, to show you like this, I would come in. I'm going to place it. <laughs> I just don't, what I'm worried about is if you touch the super glue to the, to the fur where it's not supposed to be, it's going to ruin it. So I'm going to come in from the top and stick it right where I want it to be. Okay. Oh. And I'm going to push it onto that hook. Really? <laughs> Pogues. <laughs> My name is Pogues. I know first aid. Can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Just relentless. Okay, so now that I've got that pushed on, I'm gonna take my first set of wraps, okay? So again, start with a light one, because this is gonna wanna spin on you, and it's it. this is especially gonna wanna spin on you. So all I've done is I've done a couple light, and you can see now it's starting to suck itself down onto that hook. And you can still see that the hook is kind of in there, like you can see that coming through just a little bit in the back there, but it's okay. So note the gap in the hook and the shank. Shank? Shank. Am I using the right word? Um, Almost, almost. Almost. I wonder if we ever used a, what hook would have a wider gap? Yeah, it's tough. You, I mean, you're using streamer hooks most of the time for these, so yeah, it's tough. I don't know. Most of the time you're just using a, you might go to a little bit bigger sized hook, but go with a regular size shaft. You don't want to go like 3x, 4x. <laughs> Would you just get... <laughs> no, I'm just like S Steve's wife keep walking into the den looking at him weird. Oh, She's yes. like... What are we talking about in here? What are you doing? You're obsessed with what? <laughs> okay. Let's get back to this fly, guys. So... <laughs> Prison edition. <laughs> <laughs> we got this set. Oh, yes. It's good. Okay, so go and find your flossy legs. Okay, so we got these guys here. Okay, so this first one is a little bit tricky. Ooh, this is a one really long one. So we're gonna split this in half a few times. So this, depending on how they come in your pack, it'll probably be very similar to this one. You you need half for the next fly. So I'm gonna get rid of that stuff. 
I'm going to split this in half again. So what we'll do, once everybody gets their legs on, we have over 100 shares, Ooh, so nice. we will we will give away this kit. Nice. Okay, so basically what I'm working down to is just getting a couple of short pieces and I'm just keep I'm just keep halving this. <clears throat> How do you like those scissors? They're nice. Yeah. Yeah, they're really nice. It's the nice. first time. Super effective, yeah. So I've got two pieces like so. Now what I want to do is I essentially want to put a knot in them right in the middle. Okay? So what that looks like, it's not super easy to work with this stuff, but I'm just going to take it, turn it. Huh. I say that. Tie a knot right in the middle. Which is never super easy, but <laughs> it's struggle fest here. Once you get that knot in there, you'll see why it's important. Hopefully, you're having an easier time than me. Okay, there we go. So, ooh, don't lose it now. So you want a, a knot somewhere roughly in the middle. Okay, that's that's fine. So what I'm gonna do then is I've got these this knot here. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna snip out one off one side, okay? So you see how there's two on each side, two on that side. I'm gonna go in and snip out one of them right at the knot. Okay, so now I got one on one side and two on the other. Okay, does that make sense? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it so that the two are together and this is what I'm gonna tie in to start with. So this is going to represent a hopper leg, okay? So that's why we have that joint in it. So I want that ball or that knot to be just almost... It's a kneecap. Kneecap, yeah. Almost to the back end of that fly, okay, is where I'm going to place it. I'm going to place it on the side of the fly and I'm going to tie this in, okay? I'm just going to take a nice light wrap to kind of get it where I want it. One more wrap and then I can go in and I can work with it. Make sure I get it where I want it. So a question from Bill. Anywhere in Canada sell shore products yes so shore is canadian and uh you can go on their website but what they encourage you to do is go to your local fly shop and request that they get shore products and bill i'm not sure where you're from uh let me know and i'll see if i can find a dealer near you mm -hmm. reed's fly shop in edmonton Yes, and I believe they're in Trout Fitters in Calgary, mm. for sure. Uh, but yeah, so if you if your fly shop doesn't sell them, go in there and ask them why not. Yeah, good question. Hopefully, we can get uh, get them even more into more places. So guys, what Carry we just on. did, we need to do again. So you're gonna cut another two short pieces. I need to tie those ones on a knot. Okay, so we're just repeating the process. We're gonna tie in another set of legs. Legs and, and knuckles. So just like so, I tied in another set. I'm gonna go in like I did last time, and I'm gonna trim out one off one side. Now something I, I like to do when I tie these for myself is I'll actually take a really different color. So let's say I'm doing the legs in like olive green. Um, I would go olive green and red or olive green and pink as the other color of the leg so that when I tie them together um, and I tie in like so, I got the, the kneecap, we'll say there, and then this back piece would be that bright one. So it's almost like a cider. It's like it, it, it's a different look appearance. It just, it looks different. Well, and hoppers no also have, don't quote me, but... I believe there's like a change in their legs color throughout the season. Yeah. Well, there's like, like those... sometimes they are light or red yeah. on, the, on the inside of their thighs and stuff. I don't know if that changes, but <laughs> wow. when, you, when you're inspecting the inside of the grasshopper's thighs. Hey, you spend a lot of time looking at bugs when, you, when you're trying to catch fish with them. <laughs> and when you're not catching fish. Yeah, you really look at them. You really spend a lot of time. <laughs> so I want to do the same thing here. I'm going to pull that other leg back so that I can see that they're even. Remembering that... I'm tying with the, the one that has two legs. So the two leg side is the one that goes on, um, gets tied in, and then the single leg is gonna dangle off the back. So just make sure you match up the two so they're fairly even, not super critical, but that's what we're gonna do. Tie them in, get some good thread wraps, 
and now it's gonna look like so. Okay, but what we don't want is this stuff. So we're gonna go in and get rid of those, just being very careful not to cut your other legs or the whole process has gotta start over, okay? So I'm just giving them a little tug, I'm going in and cutting them out, okay? So it looks like so. And sometimes these legs just aren't gonna sit the way you want them to, no matter what you do. Not a big deal, guys. Really, once they're in the water, they're gonna lay in their own direction anyways. Okay, so the, the other piece that we need to add um, to this part of the body is we need to add in some more of our yarn. Okay, so I've got some of this St. Pauli yarn, or you can use post material, um, Chernobyl, wing, whatever it is you wanna use. You can use EP fibers even. Um, this is just meant to look like a wing of some kind and also a cider for you. So I'm gonna split that in half. I'm gonna lay it on top. Take some good thread wraps. I'm gonna pull them both to the rear and lay them like so, okay? So my desire is that those will stay together. So one thing you can do, um, I like to do to start where is here, is I like to go in and, and just use a little bit of bone dry and I'll show you what I do with it. Not only does it secure that, that leg position, um, but it's, if I pull that wing back and I just put a little drop in here and let it soak in for a half a second, what I then do is I get to decide where I want that wing to sit. So if I want it to sit flat, then it would sit flat. But I want to I want to lift it up just a smidge. I'm gonna to touch it with my torch. And voila. It's gonna stay where I want it. It's not gonna come forward, it's not gonna lay back all the way because I put that little bit of resin in there and that it's UV so it hardens. Um, it's gonna maintain that uh, that shape, which is what I want. So I'm here already, I'm gonna go in and trim this to where I want it. Okay, so I pull this back and I wanna cut it off right at the back end of the fly. Okay, that's where my marker is, like so. Okay? Okay, legs are in, and you went one step further that's than I wanted you to. Where okay. are we at? It's me and you, here, okay. So we've got the paths with legs attached, we do. and we've got a wing or an indicator-ish thing sort of both so that's a good point to give away this product here <laughs> <laughs> dr slick tire gift set so tim open your phone all right what am i doing we're gonna check comments okay because i know they're slightly delayed here and we don't want anybody to not win this because <laughs> of the delay okay one second so yeah this is a uh, $80 toolkit from Dr. Slick, and it is donated by our friends at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. We will ship it to you, and there's people waiting for shipments of products from the giveaway back before Christmas, but we want to give it away. So we've hit over 100 shares. We all know what that means. It's time... <laughs> To give Some away. away. All so right, I'm watching. Hold tight. Um, I should have brought Very, Mark. Oh, I had one right here. I would say it's right there somewhere. Just about, just about Dictor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Type this comment in. We need to know between. Wait, how many viewers we got in here? 114 and there's some on YouTube so the YouTube people are also counted for and Adrian you lose <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nobody likes a premature guesser yeah sorry bud okay <laughs> because the best part about this it's also <laughs> a toy shop it's fly shop but I like what everyone's doing but the answer is somewhere between what letter between oh. A and Z Boom. Show me the letter. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Okay. So between A and Z, what letter? If you guess the letter, the first one to guess the letter wins. So right, let's, let's see hammer out your comments, folks, and we will wait. There is no limit on the amount of guesses. Just guess. Just
<laughs> tell me when, Tim. I'll tell ya. Not oh, there yet. we go. Wait, wait. I see one. I don't see it in here yet. Well, it came here. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, <nah>. Okay, whoa. <laughs> It's got out of hand super quick. I literally watched from the start, nothing came up. Okay, hold tight. We got uh, music's loud because I thought it was going to take a while. Okay. That's weird, that comment didn't even show up on mine. I know, but it's here. I just saw it. The letter was F. Charlie. No, he wasn't the first. I saw it before him. Well, tell you folks, we're checking the comments. <laughs> we're checking the comments. And if you're still guessing, we appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. See, Barry said B. Gunner Cove. There it is. This is the first F that I see is Gunner yeah. Cove. Gunner Cove. And if it's not fair, I apologize. <laughs> but that's the first one to show up here on our screen. Um, by the way, Tim, how do you like that screen? <laughs> I wish you all could see the screen. Tim can finally see the comments because of 70-some plus inches of pure glory on the wall. Yeah, so F is the winner, and Gunner Cove, you are the winner. Whether that's fair or not, I don't know. Um, apparently, Tim couldn't track it. So, <laughs> Gunner, send us an email, info at Fly Fishing Bull River, and the fine folks at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop have just made your fly time journey pretty epic yeah, with buddy. this uh dr slick uh tires gift set so thanks yeah, rocky thank mountain so fly shop that's an epic set guys the and, dr slick uh, stuff is no joke <clears throat> that's awesome gunner has been tuning in for quite a while so mm -hmm. as we say thanks to the sponsors let's really say thanks and we'll be right back in one minute with the amount of time we spend in front of our vices. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Aw, oh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. Family owned and operated. Need local flies? We're your guides. <laughs> There are a lot of great rotary vices on the market, but only the Norvice spins the hook. It's for this reason that it's been said the Norvice is the most innovative fly tying system on the market. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, wow, well, there we are. Well, hey, sorry. Well, sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, Gunner, we had yeah. a change of heart. No. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. He meant to type F. <laughs> Honestly, he says honest. I, we have to take him at face value. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Uh, sorry, Steve. Uh, Can't do it. Good job, Gunner. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop for the win, and Gunner also for the win. So, yeah. okay. We love it here Thursdays, uh, hanging out with you guys. Yes. Obviously, we are two hours in, and we get off on tangents. But, hey, we're just hanging, hanging. drinking a beer, and really... That's pretty awesome. So let's get back to the fly. We're almost there, guys. We're pretty close. All the hard work is done. The prep work is the hard part. Okay, so we only have one more tie-in point. We're going to put some materials, and then we'll wrap this fly up, okay? So uh, as we, as we kind of get into more hopper patterns, uh, stonefly patterns, stuff where we're working with foam, we're going to, we're kind I mean, I'm going to say this generally, but we're, we're, we've tried to organize things so that we can show you new techniques as we go along. So hopefully we have like a build of progression to patterns we get to later. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a trick that we use with foam. So how we advance um, advance our thread without showing our work to the fish below. So <clears throat> for instance, I need to get my thread forward to the next tie-in. So I wanna split this foam in half. So to be right about here is where I wanna put in my next tie-in. Okay, so how do I get my thread there? And lots of you probably know this already, just a reminder. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna come from the top, okay? And now I'm gonna make almost an X. It's only an X, it's the half of an X. We're gonna come across at a diagonal and then wrap straight around, okay? So now you can tell I showed nothing on the underside as far as thread was concerned. I didn't show a cross, a cross wrap. I saved it till I got up here. So I again, have Mark. 
halfway into this, and I remembered why I buy hoppers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, touche. Once you get good at them, buddy, trust me, it's good. Okay, so just crossed over to the place where I wanted to tie in again, a little farther up. I'm gonna do a full wrap there, okay? And now I've secured that spot. I'm gonna come in, take a few more tight wraps. Now, if you look at it from the top, all you're gonna see is one diagonal line, and that's gonna be covered here with some cider foam in a second. So that's kind of the, the cool part of that design, is we're uh, just gonna make sure I don't show too much there. Yeah, really cool. So we'll use that more as we can move forward and tying segmented bodies and all that kind of stuff, okay? So what we gotta tie up here at front, now we got to tie in um, a piece of cider foam. So you got some orange in there. So we're just going to take a little snippet of that to start with. Okay, we'll cut off a little piece of that. Not exact science here, guys. We'll, we'll trim it anyways. So I just had a little piece. I'll set that aside for a moment. And now I'm going to tie in some legs. So you've probably got some little trimmings, and that's more than enough for these legs. Okay, so when the legs are done, they're going to look like this, right? They're short, and they're stubby. These are the front legs to fly. You can also knot the front ones. So I think on the ones we did for you, we did knot them. Um, it's not super easy, but knotting them and then um, getting them arranged in the right direction will send them in, in the direction you want them to go. But rarely does it work, <laughs> work out that well. So I'm gonna show you the simple way. This is just as effective. The thing with hoppers, if you've ever taken a hopper and flipped it onto the water, they often just lay there. Mm -hmm. But their legs are splayed just like the pattern you just showed us yeah it's, it's like a deer standing on ice right they're just like this isn't their normal territory they don't want to move too much because for one thing it triggers fish to eat them um, and for another thing hoppers aren't designed to swim like they're designed to fly hop in the grass all these things so they hit water they spread their legs out and they're just there okay? yeah and their so, legs need something to push off on mm -hmm. they don't walk they they push and jump so putting knots in your rubber legs allows them to stick out proportionate to their body very similar to wings on a spinner mm -hmm. on a spent spinner bug yeah so although you might think it's tedious maybe it's the difference between fish maybe it is and no fish and maybe it's just none of the above <laughs> so you do what you like i'm going to show you the easy version tonight so all i'm doing um i got this little piece here i know that those legs are more than long enough so i'm just going to center it um, I'll do it on the front side first so you can see. I'm just going to place it there on the edge, on the side of the fly. Take one loose wrap, a second one over top, and then I'm going to go in there and arrange it where I want it to be. That looks perfect. Looks like so. Good. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the front side. How long would this fly take <clears throat> if you didn't have to explain it in detail? I can tie one of these in probably two, three minutes. Yeah, well, if you're all prepped. If I'm prepped, yeah. So Sorry, if you want to tie really... like two dozen, yeah. cut them, glue them, get them ready, yeah. and it's super quick. And guys, there there is a, a cutter made by MFC that cuts this exact shape. Literally, I have all the foam glued together, everything's laid out, and it's punch, punch, punch. So if everything's prepped like that and you're just putting it on the hook, if you think about it, there's really not a lot of work on the hook once it's there. All the, all the work is in the prep work. So this can be our super, like this is one of the, oh, stop giving away secrets, but I use this fly occasionally. So I tie a lot of them and I, you get very good at them very quickly. Well, I use them a lot. That's why you have to tie a lot. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. Okay, so I put in those legs on the other side. I've made sure they're good and secure where I like them. Take another securing wrap, looks like so. Okay. Now all I'm gonna do is take that piece of cider foam. So just that little piece of foam. I'm gonna lay it right half and half on either edge of that tying point again. I'm gonna take a nice tight wrap. I'm gonna suck it down hard into that space. So it looks like so. You can trim that back a little if you want. That actually ended up being a pretty good size. I'll take just a little bit off of it. The fish isn't gonna see that anyways. That's purely for you. <clears throat> and from this point, all I'm gonna do is come underneath. I'm gonna advance my thread up the hook like so. So all I did was pull it at a bit of an angle and got it on the eye. I also can leave it as so and whip finish it right there. Either is fine, because I have glue on that, um, so that's not going anywhere, okay? So I will whip finish it right here, just because that's simple. <clears throat> Pull it out, take my whip finish tool, do three, four turn whip finish, seat that knot, 
snip it out. Be very careful not to cut your legs because that's a real bummer at this point in the fly. Ugh. And we've only Blow got back one, on. <laughs> one more stage to go here. So now that I've got uh, this done, I've got my wing cut, my front legs. I'm going to push my legs together in the front just so I can kind of see that length, make sure they're even. Um, I want them to basically be the hook, again, the hook gap. So always measuring for the most part off that hook gap. So barely out in front of the head. I'm just more gonna trim these a little just to make sure they're super even. And I'm happy with that. Um, same thing, I can bring these guys up and check them. Those look even to me too. If they look odd when you look at the fly, you might wanna trim them a bit. Um, and then when I come off the back of these back ones, I can see from the knuckle to the fly, that same distance is what I wanna cut this one. So it's basically equal, okay? So the same distance from the knuckle to the end as from the knuckle to the fly. So same thing on this one, I pull it up from the knuckle to the fly and knuckle to here. I'm gonna cut it like that, okay? So we got that appearance. And now just cause I can, I'm gonna go in and just bar these real quick just cause I have a marker sitting here. Just for that added appearance piece. You can do it to the front ones too if you like. It's super easy once you have this tied up to just put some marks on them. The floss take the mark a lot easier than a uh, regular rubber leg, but just like so, barred them up real quick. Okay, now the last piece of the puzzle on this fly is we have some eyes for you guys. Now this is purely aesthetic. <laughs> this is not necessary. Um, normally what I do is I come in like this simply like that. I come in with a put the marker, eyes on put a dot, but I'm going to show you how to put these eyes on with some Rosina. So <clears throat> fish need the eyes. Fish need the eyes. Apparently. Um, these little guys can be kind of tough to deal with cause they're not very big, but there are actual eyes made for hoppers. Um, so they, they are a little bit different shape, but these guys are just, we're just using some small like fish eyes on this one. What I like to do and how I like to attach them. Um, I like to just come in, I have my, again, my solar res bone dry. I'm just gonna put a little dab right where I want it to sit. Okay, not too much, but just enough so that it's gonna sit in something. Now you can take your scissors, you can take whatever you want. Uh, I'm something, a tool that you can basically place that eye on there with and not get your fingers too much in it. Um, a bodkin works really well as well. I'm just gonna come in and place that now I've placed it right on top there. I've got it where I want it. All I'm gonna do is take my scissor or my tool and push it down into that glue. Take my light. Zap it. Bazoom. It's about the point in time. Rosina used to walk across the screen and dance for everybody. It's true. So it looks like so. All right, got that eye on there. And so that's why we did that little bit of trim. It's just enough that it flattens that front there so I can place that eye. And sometimes even taking that marker and putting a mark there is good for you because it just in your head it shows you where you want to put your uh, put your eye. Now I'm gonna grab my other one here. If I can pick it off the table. Cam said he's two for two, and he did not use the eyes because his cat has them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. his cat stole them. All right, Alana, her computer's gonna die, and. Uh, Appreciate you tuning in, yeah, thanks as always. Always good to have you out. Okay, so I'm just gonna place my last eye in here. Get it close with my fingers. Ow! I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come in here, make sure I push that eye down into the glue. Zap this last one. And guys. Guys. You survived. Girls, guys. Friends, you survived the Pavlov Hopper. You did it. And cool thing is, if you thought this was fun, we're gonna do it again later in a very similar fashion when we tie the Pavlov stone oh my. later in the season. Um, virtually identical, one more time point in a little different shape, but we're gonna get to practice that furry stuff again. So don't worry, we'll come back to it. But that's your two flies for the week, guys. Um, been, a, been a treat as always. Meditate. Hopefully you learned something. Um, again, go back to YouTube because we're going to take these and cache them there. 
Um, so at your own pace, if you need to hit pause on me because I'm talking too fast or whatever it is, it's a great place to go back and tie your second pattern. That's why we give you a couple so that you have enough material to go back and do it again. Yeah, so <clears throat> that's pretty cool. The foam is super fun, and sometimes the nymphs are a little more tedious, but that's why we're doing a whole bunch of patterns. Having said that, for season four, we are taking requests. So send us an email. I've posted it in the comments a bunch of times. And just let us know what patterns would you like to see for season four? Yeah. Because sometimes we run out of ideas. <laughs> uh, so far, we've done season one, two, three, 57. We're like going to be 150 some patterns. Yeah. Some have repeated. Yeah. But we'll uh, probably always repeat some patterns because they're favorites. But um, okay. We know what time of the night it is. And Doug, this is going to be a segment. And I'm <laughs> thinking about what to call it. But it's Jokes with Doug. So, Doug. He's got one for us. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear the fight ab you about the fight at the seafood restaurant? No, I didn't, Doug. Please tell <laughs> us. Come on. Fight at the seafood restaurant. Uh, Trina's was last year, Quinn. Um, but definitely we're going to bring that back into the fold yeah that's a great pattern that's to learn great so. that's a horrible pattern on the bow river yeah never use it <coughs> john's gonna move up here for season four <laughs> yeah come on buddy uh, bruce and the the game changer is here and it is episode 20. <laughs> two fish got battered oh. <laughs> oh i had sound effects i gotta get the want wah yeah, in wah, here wah. i got too much going on I don't think the jokes are getting better. They they are. <laughs> that's 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 maybe not the best one. Okay, now onto something more serious. We have an issue in Alberta, and we need your guys' help. They have been in talks with open pit coal mining, mm -hmm. and if this goes through, this could destroy one of our favorite parts of Alberta our mountain streams so we need help and i don't even know what that means we're going to post about it in the next few days yeah but the same that happened with uh like pebble mine mm -hmm. and stuff like that the more voices that jump in we're going to make a change because just to read some stuff here that um earlier this year the alberta government quietly rescinded the 1976 coal policy that had protected all of our watersheds along the eastern slopes of the Rockies. And now if you've been up here and fished with us, or if you're from here, it's probably one of your most favorite places to go. The scenery is to die for, the fish are plentiful, and it is incredible, okay? It has recovered in the last 35 years to be what it is today. It gets fished hard, Very and, hard but. but there's still a ton of healthy fish that continue to be there. So um, this policy was rescinded with no warning or public consultation and in the name of modernization. This policy was put into place with foresight decades ago by the conservative government of Peter Lougheed to protect our watersheds from indiscriminate open pit coal extraction. These water resources were recognized for their great importance to the province since most of our communities depend upon them for water supply and not to mention the irrigation needs of farmers and ranchers in the south of the province. In time, these watersheds were recognized for their great recreational potential with the development of catch and release fly fishing regulations to protect the native and introduced trout populations that reside in these picturesque waters. So um, I believe there's a couple petitions out there. Check out our Instagram page. We need your help. We need voices and I'm not I don't jump into politics, trust me. And 
it took me a while to share about this because yeah. I really wanted to find out what was fluff and what wasn't. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> whether it's a crappy premiere or a great premiere, I don't have the answers for that. This, this is about this needs to be protected. Yeah. Furthermore, it's not even Canadian companies. No, this is an Australian company that's trying yeah, to build this Yeah, that's mines. coming in here. <clears throat> and and yeah. we're not going to conversate about what's clean energy and what's dirty energy. But this, this isn't good. No, this, and this, is, this is known to be dirty and to wreck waterways. Like, it, there's just, it's happened in the past and it will happen again if we don't stop it. Like... There's no two ways about it. This will devastate that water system. Yeah. So we thought we were stopping all coal use in the province, in the province, but this uh, policy got rescinded, and I don't know how it happened. How do you just rescind? Yeah. Well. And I don't know all the details, but we have. This can't take place. Trust me. Um, Southern Alberta was coal mining down in the crow's nest. Uh, for a long time and yeah. thankfully it ended because now we can go fish down there and yes it's a job for us it's yeah. part of our livelihood but honestly throw that in the garbage if I never did this for a job for guiding it is probably one of the most beautiful places in Alberta yeah. and every time I take clients there and we drive in it's quiet in the car and everybody just sits there and stares at the majestic Rockies and the water. And it's like, I don't care if we catch fish. No, it's heaven. It's just, it's, it's different. It's a different place. It's serenity. It's everything. Yeah. So, uh, Brandy just threw up a link. Hopefully it's clickable in the comments on Facebook. Um, but yeah, something very dear to us. Yeah. And I didn't want to get all political here, but... Yes, we need to talk about this and figure out what's right or wrong. And uh, do your research. Don't just go sign a petition. Do your research. I mean, if this is the answer for the future, maybe it's the answer. Personally, I don't agree. No. Uh, but that's for you guys to decide. Um, so, yeah. That's kind of the sobering comments at the end of A Wonderful Night. Yeah. But... I just wanted to bring attention because we have a voice, you guys have a voice, and together it's very loud. So let's be loud about it. Yeah. It's the only way we're going to instill change is if we talk about it. Yeah. I saw Geoff said that it made international news yesterday. So that's great. That's what we need. So a lot of you guys aren't from Canada, and that's amazing. Your voice means something too, right? Tell, tell people around you, tell the other fly shops you go into. The, cause what, what people don't understand is, yes, the border's closed right now, but the majority of our clientele are American. And those yeah. are the people we come up here and we serve in that in that area. So we're not going to be able to do that if it's not here, if, if we can't fish it anymore. So No, and our it, kids aren't going to fish our, it. Our Ren, kids won't. Ren's yeah. going to have enjoyed her five years, the last five years, which and that's is the it. first. Yeah, the first Matea five years of her life. <laughs> can't take her back to the old man because there's no fish there. And it's dirty, yeah. oily, greasy water. So... It's just voices, folks. We've, <clears throat> as a community, stood up for many things in the past, and we have made change. Yeah. So, we um, need to do that again. We can, for sure. Yeah. We went a long time tonight, but that's okay. It's okay. Hopefully, you guys are sticking with us yeah. through it. And it, wait, guys, um, it's amazing. Like, we're, you guys all stick around with us through these conversations, and everything. And I think what's coolest for me now is for me being able to see the engagement that only Dana normally sees is. Like, it's overwhelming for me to see how much yeah. you guys are actually talking to us. And it's great to see that. And to each other. And to each other, right? Like, that's what makes this fun. So, yeah, it's great. Loving it. So, if I look like I'm staring off into space, it's just because I'm reading your, We're just reading your comments. <laughs> looking at the wall of screen behind us. Yeah. <laughs> so, you guys are awesome. Seriously, um, I look forward to Thursday because I get to see and hang out with a lot of you guys. Yeah. And there's new people all the time, and you become like characters in this movie of like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cam breaks true. his threads. Um, we're just making fun of Cam. Sometimes Steve's wife thinks he's off the hook because of this weird fly tying event he's, he's attending. 
and uh, all the perversion talk. <laughs> um, so, 100%, if you guys aren't here, we're just a couple dorks sitting in a studio six feet apart. <laughs> yeah. We're still, we still are dorks. <laughs> yeah, we're still dorks. No matter how far away you are, we're still dorks. Yeah, so thanks to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Shore Fishing, Norvice. Thanks to you guys, and we will be back. What is next Thursday? Oh, what's a Thursday? Is a clouds are variation, mm -hmm. similar but not quite, and the pill popper. Ooh, which, nice. if there's any Montana folks in here, that is a Missouri bug. Missouri bug. Missouri yep. bug. Great pattern. So we love you guys, all of Very you. Much. Uh, feel free to reach out to us, uh, Instagram, Facebook, however you find us, and keep the conversation going with mm -hmm. this coal mining or whatever it is. Um, we're pretty accessible. and Don't forget to post your flies on Instagram, tag us, and we love yeah. we love to see what you guys. It's it's rewarding for us to see that not only you're tying them, but we, I mean we love to see what your flies look like. It's it's encouraging to watch your growth. A lot of you we've seen from the very start. So, yeah, yeah. be sure to post them up, tag us, and we love to see it. Yeah, hundred percent. As always, I'm Dana Lattery, Tim Hepworth. Uh, we love you guys. We'll see you next Thursday. See you next Thursday. <laughs>